And here we are. It's Trials of Fire. This game is really fun. Uh, I heard about it on Waypoint Radio, I believe courtesy of Austin underscore Walker, um, who's now off doing game dev right now uh, while still co-hosting or hosting Friends of the Table. So shout outs to Austin for having video game taste that broadly overlaps with my own. Uh, for those of y'all who are here and listening, if you could let me know how the audio is, if you're hearing me okay, if you're hearing the game too much, not enough, um, and I can adjust some levels to see uh, see what I can do and make sure that y'all are having a good time. Happy Sunday afternoon. Or uh, I think the Canadian folks, y'all just had Thanksgiving. And in the U.S., we're about to have um, Indigenous Peoples Day because Christopher Columbus is terrible. Um, cool. Sound good. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Star-Eyed Green. Uh, if, if we, I've in, I've run into you on Twitch before, I don't remember whether you, your identity goes with somebody who I know from elsewhere in the internet, because that name on its own does not ring a bell, but very good to see you regardless. And yeah, I think if the audio is good, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I have some other game, but I'm going to, we're going to start a new one. Oh, okay. So it looks like my data is gone. Well, that's fine. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play the kind of core campaign of this game. Um, is this locked? Oh, okay. So I'm going to abandon this run. There we go. Oh, cool. Well, thank you for coming over from I Should Be Writing. Uh, I appreciate it. All right, um, so this game has a lot of elements from uh, that would be familiar to somebody who has played like Slay the Spire or in the board game world, um, games like Dominion. Um, here you've got kind of traditional fantasy role-playing style characters in. You've got a hunter, a warlord, and a cultist. I'm actually going to change... Um, I think I'm going to change my party. Yeah, so go over here. The, the characters you get to begin with is like so, Hunter, Warrior, Elementalist. And I like these characters pretty well. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start with them as my party. Um, and then we can kind of build out from there. Maybe I will lose in like 20 minutes and I'll have to start again. Um, or maybe I won't. We'll see. So here you get to pick your your starting items so the hunter has a crude spear and i could instead can i give you this bow instead yeah i can so the hunter is already a ranged character the crude spear uh, item is versatile because it can do a melee attack or a ranged attack um, but i'm gonna let this hunter spec right into range attacks right away and the warrior has the double strike. Um, do you get a, can I give you a heavy weapon instead? I can. So you could have that. Um, I'm going to give my warrior charge because since the warrior is a um, really melee focused character, I need Jara to be in the fight as much as is possible. And let's see, I can't change your armor, is that right? I don't think I can change the character's armor. I can, however, for my elementalist, change which magic staff I want. So there's flame, the, the shaman rod, which does flame fan, which is like um, burning hands in D&D. Um, in &D. You've got the mystic cane, which is more defensive. The force rod, which does damage and knockback, which can be really handy and the Crackle Rod, which is uh, called Lightning. Shocked is a status where you can, it'll see the, it'll show you the pop-up here. Whenever hit by a melee or ranged attack, deal one status damage to all friendlies within two spaces. So if you've got enemies clumped up and you get them shocked and then damage them, it can be really powerful. I think we're gonna stick with this. And this is gonna be medium difficulty. Yeah, let's go for it. The settlement, Terralyn, is dying. 
you must track down the settlement's leader, Naya, who has ventured out into the grasslands in search of a powerful artifact that has not been heard from for weeks. So this game does the fun thing where it's got pop-up text. I'm not going to read all of this. This is too much pop-up text. Uh, but basically, Terralyn is kind of starting settlement. This is a setting where there was an, a, like a magical apocalypse some time ago, and you, um, the peoples are recovering. So it's kind of got a little bit of Dark Sun vibes, but it still mostly feels like kind of traditional points of light fantasy. So if you're familiar with the Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition setting, it's a little bit like this. But if you're interested in having like in focusing on the story in this game, there is a lot of sto um, story. Like there's a, a good bit of actual world building that was really fun to discover as I was playing. So Terrellin is dying. The leader, Naya, who's an aging warrior, um, has gone out to find something that will help the, the people. This is kind of like the setup for the first or the second Fallout game, where you have to go and get the, um, the Gek, or like the water purifier thing. Kind of similar thing. It's somebody leaves town. Um, and then now you're going after Naya. So the Grasslands is kind of like the place. It's um, So it's Glasslands. Uh, that's an important world-building difference. Glasslands is cooler and more evocative than grasslands, though grasslands are pretty cool. So yeah, uh, you've got scorching heat from the cataclysm, which is this magical apocalypse. Um, yeah, so our objective is to track down Naya, the voider leader, and return with her or news of her fate. Um, and now we continue. Okay, so here's our overworld map. Um, and I'm going to... Yeah, so I think having me right over here is going to be fine. Um, please let me know if it seems like this is covering up something important or if there's some part of the UI that um, you can't see. So here's my little party in their overworld um, situation. It's got portraits for each of the three characters. Uh, on this side here, we have kind of a, a quick status where each character has their special ability, so the hunter is lethal. Your first attack on a single target each turn deals plus two damage. So they're good at say, at like um, burning down one enemy at a time. So you've got hit points here, and then they've got armor, which is basically hit points they can or damage they can take during a fight without losing hit points. My fighter, of course, has more. Her ability again, um, or her ability, is about being up front once per turn after you play a card and are adjacent to an enemy. Defend two on all other heroes. That's like giving them block. Um, it's defense that they can lose without it, give, it taking away their hit points. And then my elementalist. The first tar card you play each turn costs minus one willpower. So willpower is the mana equivalent in this game. You will generate um, willpower in a few different ways each turn. So that's my characters. Um, I'm on day one. There's basically three checkpoints in this mission. And then we have two gauges, morale, um, where you want to keep your party's morale high by making progress toward your next objective. A high morale will grant bonus armor and redraws in combat, as well as an increased chance of finding epic gear. So when you're determined, you get bonus armor, bonus redraws, and better loot. So this is your morale track. You lose morale over the course of time, and you lose less if you are headed directly toward your objective. So whatever this first objective is, so tracking down Naya, that's what this arrow is for. The arrow is, okay, this is where your objective is. So I will lose morale less, uh, basically I'll maintain morale better if I'm heading toward my objective. But if I go right to the objective and interact with nothing along the way, I won't have accumulated any new cards or any new gear. So there's a, a certain balance that you have to do between... Um, getting the loot and the cards so that you can become more powerful and not uh, not spending so much time that your morale goes down and you're going to lose a lot of bonuses. So when you do get to the end boss, um, things get bad. So in the world, when you have a question mark, this is um, basically a place where you can have some kind of event. And the, uh, the kind of the bars here are telling you what is most likely to happen. So I'm most likely to have a battle and for there to be food at these elven ruins. I'm somewhat likely for there to be equipment and I'm a little likely to have herbs or materials. So elven ruins tends to be 
more frequently you're going to run into an event like a, a story event will pop up and then there'll be some narrative and you'll have to make a decision usually um a town you're less likely to have a fight and you're much more likely to get shopping so here in the settlement there's pretty decent chance i'm going to shop and a small chance that i'm going to battle so I look over here my coin obsidian coins is just money i have 50 that's maybe enough to get something but not too likely. This is my food supplies. Um, when I camp, you're going to want to spend food to recover health. Um, sometimes you can recover injuries if you also have um, these herbs. And herbs can also do stuff with your deck. And then this is stamina. So this is kind of the, the party's physical um, traveling health. When you're low on stamina, you're going to have less health in the fight um, when you're, whenever you're in a battle. So to move, I just click on a part in the world and my party moves and the map scrolls. So I'm going to go to these ruins first, where there's a good chance that there's going to be uh, a fight. But instead, as you search the ruins of an elven temple, the party is approached by a humanoid figure. She is not hostile and introduces herself as a dryad, the protector of the forest and the elven nature temple. So elves, supposedly immortal creatures. Um, so these are mostly fantasy elves. And then dryads are mostly the same as dryads in folklore and mythology. Elemental magic, not thought to be hostile unless they or the forests are in imminent danger. Uh, it is not known whether they survive the cataclysm. Spoilers, they survive the cataclysm. Here we are. So now I have two options. I can leave the temple undisturbed and we'll, I'll gain a follower. Followers are, they're not cards in your deck. They are beings with, that give you kind of floating bonuses. Or I could ignore the request and loot the temple. I'm not going to loot the temple. Uh, I don't. I have three food. I don't really need food that much. And getting a follower right away, I think, will be cool. The Dryad thanks Jara for her sensitivity. When Jara explains the party's goal, she, the Dryad, offers to come with you and help bring some, uh, bring back, bring life back to some of Ash. So this is this world, Ashe maybe, but probably Ash because glasslands and things. So in Ash, we're 150 years post-apocalypse. Um, so it's long enough for most of the people who are alive now were probably not alive when the apocalypse happened, except maybe for some, like, elves or something. I think maybe she's an elf. I don't remember. So I could refuse the follower, but I want to have a follower. So here we are. And... So this is Aura, a dryad, and has the ability Forester, move through forest tiles at full speed. So this tells us that if you don't have uh, a Forester, then you would move through forest tiles at slower speed. So that's handy. We haven't we ran into forest here a little bit. Um, I still have the same amount of gold. I still have pretty good morale. So let's go over here and let's see what the event is. You come across a clump of rocks with some hardened, spiny vibes jutting out from the ground. A single decomposing rattling can be seen wrapped among the, smart, the sharp vines, and a small pack lies nearby. So rattlings, kind of uh, like in Warhammer Fantasy or maybe in um, the Brian Jacques Redwall books. So you've got rat person. My options are try to free the body from the strange vines. So there's a 33 chance that I will take an injury and or health damage, or I can just take the Rattling's pack and move on. Let's try to be nice. Um, so this is Malkin. Malkin tugs on the vines, and after some initial resistance, one of the thicker tendrils suddenly bursts in a shower of red hot ashes. She manages to pull away quickly to avoid the burning debris. So I avoid the injury, and instead I get loot. Cool. So loot, ha uh, like in a lot of games, like, you know, Destiny or whatever, um, items have rarity. So green is, like, so gray is the most common. Green is uncommon. Blue is rare. Purple is whatever, is heroic, I guess. Uh, heroic actions? I don't know. Um, purple is better, and then gold is better than purple. So I have some hand wraps, which goes in the hand slot. I don't have anybody... Nobody has the hand slot yet. Treated leather, which is a common crafting material. 
and then a sun staff, which is like a very powerful fire um, fire weapon. So I'm going to take everything and continue. So now I'm going to click on my people. So here's one of the character sheets. So this is Jara, who's a warrior. Quality comes from um, your, the total of the quality rating of all of your gear. So this axe, I think, has a quality of one. And the armor doesn't have any, any quality, but it gives armor because that's what armor does. So I have these hand wraps. Um, the hand wraps give armor of one, and they also add this power to my deck. Um, might, your attacks deal bonus damage equal to the cost of the previous non-move card played. So um, that's really good if you're just like stacking on attacks. And... So right now I have two powers. I'm actually going to click over to my hunter. And I think I'm going to give him the hand wraps because he's not going to move as much because I want him to do a bunch of ranged attacks. And hopefully that will mean that I'm going to get more use out of this ability. It also gives him a little bit more armor. So I'm balancing out my armor between these characters. And then I'm going to go over to Malkin. And I have this great sun staff. It's going to add several more powerful cards to my deck. And I'm going to put this in and replace this deck. So the Crackle Rod give, adds the Call Lightning um, card to my deck, and then the Sun Staff adds Flame Fan, Fireball, and Sunfire. So this is how you build your deck. Um, the, your different items will add things to your deck, and then you have cards that are kind of core to your character that are in your deck regardless. But like a lot of deck builders, there are then ways that you can add other cards or remove cards or upgrade cards. Um, as you move along. So now Malkin has a quality of four, which means that she can redraw her hand uh, more times during a battle. So now I'm going to click back to the adventure, and I've got some stuff. So now we're going to move toward the objective, and it's now determined as uh, we're sticking around here. So this is just like a wandering enemy, and there's some ruins over here. But I'm going to just keep going because I want to show off a fight. They missed me. We're going to keep going. We're ap approaching. Um, yeah, so once you get below fresh, you start. Um, yeah, now, uh, now we're tired. So I'm going to go to the ruins. And you enter the ruins of a wealthy looking living world town. So um, living world is like what the world was before um, the apocalypse. So, um, you enter the ruins of a wealthy-looking living world town. Before you have time to search the place, you are confronted by a large armed band of ratlings who claim the site as their own. So, there's some people. They've kind of they've set up shop. Um, I can challenge the elite group. You need the spoils as much as they do. This is hard battle. Not just a, ba a battle, but a hard battle. And some food. Or I can try to negotiate to split the looting. So I'll have a 50% chance of getting food. Or I can agree to move along and basically take nothing. Let's have a fight. I've played this game a fair amount. And I did just get some cool magical power in this um, in the, the, this wand that does fireball stuff. And so here's the thing. Fireball. You deal three ma four magic damage and inflict burning onto all characters in the target area. And it's a like a instead of one one hex, it has uh, a range outside of that. So if I hit, if I put it here, I would hit both of these. And if I hit it here, I would hit both of these. So these are all rattling bowmen, so they're going to do ranged attacks. They're not going to be as strong if I can get up in their face. I've got charge, which let me move three to target and then do a melee attack for two damage, plus one damage for each space moved. But these enemies are more than three spaces apart. So you'll see that any... Um, anything that's free or that anything that I can play is has this outline going around it because I start with zero willpower. If I want to use Fireball this turn, I'm going to need to build up some willpower because I don't have the, I don't have the magic. Yeah, I don't have the willpower to be able to do this. So first, we're going to have my Archer move. So Advance says move two and gain one willpower. I can go here and now... You can see it when I hover over my character. 
he has vision on these three enemies. And so I can get a little bit more willpower if I use this advance. Now I'm up to two. The other thing you can do to get willpower is you can discard cards. So if I right cling here, uh, click here to get rid of that wild swing. Now I've got three, which means that I can do this fireball. The reason why I want to do the fireball this turn is that you discard um, all but, I think, one of your cards every turn. And fireball is really good. I can do a bunch of damage to these enemies right away. And now it says burning. Suffer two status damage at the end of your turn or whenever you suffer magic damage. So I could leave these two alone and they will die at the end of next turn unless they do something about it. They'll still get some attacks off maybe, um, which is not as great. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to discard this. When I discard a card, you'll see the swirl around this character. This means I can move them if I want, but if I move them, I don't get that willpower that I got from discarding the card. So I'm going to leave my elementalist here. I'm going to decide, do I want to do a ranged attack with, my, with this dude here? So I could attack one of these and just take them off the board entirely. Getting enemies off the board is generally a really good idea. Or I could give him Prepare, which is a power. So now he will gain one willpower at the start of each turn. If you see that four there, that is the, the powers, like, basically its health. As I take damage on this character, that four will go down. And if that four goes to zero, the power is discarded. So you have to kind of maintain your concentration to keep all these powers going. So now if I, if unless he takes four damage, I'm going to get another free will power next turn. And so now I've got a uh, jar here. So if I... If I discard this, I'll have two. And then I can use charge, and I can go one, two, three. And that will get Jara in front of my sorcerer. If instead I discard impro improvised attack and forfeit that damage, then I'll have two already. And then I could discard this to move Jara two spaces. One, two, maybe. And then I could charge one, two, three. So because of where... Uh, Malkin is, I don't know that I can get... So if I could go here and then one, two, three, then I could get um, to my enemy. And I don't think I can do that. So instead, I'm going to discard twice. I'm going to move one and two. And then I'm going to use my last to attack this Rattling. So if you see, their deck just went away because that enemy is dead. I have zero willpower left. I don't have... Um, I don't have anything that's going to get my character's defense, so they're going to take a little bit of damage, probably. Um, because my team is fatigued, now I drew that card. Which is a bummer, because it is basically a nothing card. So now my enemies are beefing up with these powers, so they're going to do more damage when they do get to attack me. That's rough. So, four damage, it got rid of prepare. Range attack two. And that planks my warrior, and then, yep, so they're just doing a bunch of damage. So now he's taken what will actually be health po um, hit point damage, and she's pretty close to taking some hit point damage. So um, I also want to get rid of these offensive stance abilities, because they're going to make them do more damage. So getting right up there, good idea. Adrenaline is a power. It's not an attack. So I'm going to do a redraw. I don't have any cards in the Recycle Shrine to redraw. First recycle the cards you want to replace, and then click here again. So I do that, and I redraw. Cool, I got an attack. That's what I wanted. I've got Focus here, which says every time you play a card that deals range damage, gain one willpower. Uh, I don't have time for that. Um, I could move him. I have to move him too much to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and discard all of that. I'm going to use a redraw for him. So now I have more cards. And for her, her first spell is costs one less, which is why this one here is always in green for each of these. So I can do Force Missile, Magic 2 to a target within three spaces, and one random enemy within two spaces of the target. 
So one, two, three. I don't have anybody quite in range. So I'm going to discard the flame fan, and then I'm going to go here. And I'm going to, I could do that. Magic three to all targets in indicated area, but that would hit my own friend. So I'm going to do two here to get this rattling off the board, and then it bounces over to the one in the back. Now, because I've played a card, this unstable blast would cost two. Probably not going to have that. Got a ranged attack five. Can you see? You can't see that enemy, but you can move here. So now, oh, still can't see them. All right. So I can swipe for one or I swipe for two here. But it says once per turn after you play a card and are adjacent to an enemy, defend two on all other heroes. So that's going to be really handy. So now these characters have some defense that will protect them against enemy attacks. My discard proved to not be such a great idea. I think I'm going to keep this, but then also keep this, which will mean that my hunter gets another plus two defense. So now hunter's at two, elemental uh, hunter's at four, elemental assist at two, and now these enemies are going to try to run away and they're going to start shooting. Yeah, so one of them plinked my hunter, which is fine. Now my warrior is taking a bit of damage. So what do I've got? I've got Force Missile, which I could use again because I'm in one, two, three. I'm going to put the defensive stance on my warrior, and I'm going to advance. And now that gives me one willpower. Then I'm going to have my Magician, my Elementalist do that. I got rid of their offensive stance because the enemy took damage. And now I'm going to have this guy uh, advance. And I've got one, so I'm going to discard that, which gives me two. And then I'm going to have my warrior do this, which gives my other people um, some, some defense. And it says headshot. This is range attack five. So I could do range attack five with either of these. And now my hunter can see this enemy because they're no longer blocked. So I'm going to discard this. I'm going to use headshot. And that's the fight. So we won, took some damage. So now we get a reward. Um, so I got some gold and I got a pocketed belt, which gives biding time. You may hold on to an additional card this turn. At the end of your, your turn, reduce the cost of all cards in hand by two. So this is um, a way to take some of your more expensive cards. And if you make the sacrifice of holding on to them and not discarding them, they will be cheaper later on. That seems pretty cool. Maybe for my archer who has a lot of cards that are um, cost two. And then I got some coins. So I'm gonna take all of that. Now I get to do a level up on one of my characters. I think I'm gonna level up my warrior because she's just gonna be in a lot of um, in a lot of fights. And I wanna get her some probably something that will give her some more sustainability. So that's looking at defense and other damage mitigation. So I have Wild Swing. So this is like a big attack that's really costly. Um, it's a basic card, so I probably want to replace it. I could replace it with Hamstring, which costs two instead of three. It says move two to target, melee attack three, and inflict immobilized. The, the, the person who's immobilized cannot um, voluntarily move. I could do Intimidate, inflict weakened, which means that the uh, enemy does less damage. Or I could do Challenging Stride, move two, gain one willpower, and then pull all enemies within range three. So the character moves, I get willpower, and then they check who is within three spaces of me, and they pull everybody in. So it's really good for a tank-type character like the Jarum. But what I'm going to take, I think, is Shield Master. This is a power, and I'm going to replace Adrenaline. Um, uh, no, let's go ahead and replace Wild Swing, so I'm going to become more defensive because I'm going to lose that attack, but I'm going to gain this power. And I confirm. After defeating the Rattlings, the party goes about exploring the ruins. And then, so we got the fight loot, and now we get the ruins loot, um, which is why fighting in some of these situations can be really handy, um, because sometimes you're going to get, like, basically a double bonus. So food, which is good because we need to rest. Mystic herbs will let you heat, um, will treat an injury or improve your deck. Excuse me, some more coins and a silk robe, which I can use to upgrade. I can trade it out for Malkin. Let's take all of that and continue. I can rest here. 
So sheltered. Resting here will restore a large amount of stamina and some health for every hero. That's fantastic. But first, before I forget about it, let's look at items. So silk robe, you can gives you rethink. Draw two cards. Choose a card to put on top of your deck. It replaces cloth rags, which gives you prepare. So this has quality one, but also armor one. So now I've got armor two. Great choice. This belt will not go on this character. Instead, we're going to go over to Rastin, and we're going to put that item there because it is a satchel type item. So the characters have these slots. So in the primary attack slot, then um, Rastin can have this a bow or a certain type of sword. And here, Rastin can have a bag or like a, pen, uh, a pentagram item. So this will add the Biding Time to Rastin's deck. Um, I've got armor three. Character's got armor two. I think that was everything that I got. Let's go back here. And now we're going to rest. So now this is my camping uh, interface. Just rest is the like most basic thing. I'm going to spend some food. We're going to get back stamina. Um, I can meditate, which is a better version of resting. I use a mystic herb to upgrade or forget a class card from one hero. Let's go ahead and do that because I want to show it off and because it will kind of give us more. So I can upgrade a card. So upgrading a card is similar to the way you upgrade cards in Slay the Spire, if you're familiar with that. If you haven't played Slay the Spire, it's a really great game. I highly recommend it. I have played it for hundreds of hours, um, and it's like a really good podcast game. So if you like want to catch up on podcasts and play something that will occupy some but not all of your attention, it's a good one. I find this one more engrossing just because there's a lot more text. All right, and I can upgrade something. So when I mouse over, I can see the upgraded version. Improvised attack goes up to melee attack 3, range attack 2, from melee attack 2, range attack 1. Power shot goes up by 1 damage. Swipe goes up by 1 damage. Advance goes up by 1 movement. So focus goes down to 1 cost. So I'm going to upgrade focus. I don't use powers nearly as much as I should, um, so I'm going to try to rectify that. In doing that, because Meditate is also a rest, my characters got their hit points back, and we um, refreshed our stamina, so that's great. You could see that I could also heal an injury, which would take two Mystic Herbs, um, which I don't have, but I don't have any injuries, and I don't have stuff to upgrade or hone. So now we've got a lot of stamina, not totally full but enough to keep going. So I'm going to go down to this burned forest. Cool. Several unusual, unusual clumps of vegetation lie ahead. In the center each of each clump is bare earth with a curious spiral pattern narrowing as it reaches the center. Interesting. What could be here? Well, we're going to get some spoilers of what could be here. Uh, you, we could dig into the earth for burrowing animals. Wow. Highlighted that becomes a bit hard to read. Um, on this interface. So um, there'll be a decision. There's a 50% chance of health damage, but a 50% chance of food. I could pick the herbs, which will give me a decision and a 50% chance of herbs. Um, I'd actually rather have herbs than food right now. So I didn't have to do a decision. Instead, I just get some herbs. Fantastic. Um, but now I could do the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and press my luck. And I got some food. Cool. So I got both things. You'll see now that we're not in a shelter, so resting here will give less stamina and less health recovery. I try to avoid camping in the rough if I can avoid it. Um, let's go over to these ruins. I feel pretty good about my morale, and I could use um, some more loot. So, a small, well-spoken chard claims to have been robbed and humiliated by a nearby tribe. She offers the party a sum of 40 obsidian if they will kill the charged the chard and help retrieve her belongings. The question is, do we believe this person? We could accept the bounty and challenge the charred band, which will give us money if we succeed, but it's a, it'll be a hard battle. We could take the obsidian, but not help the chard, so we could just rip her off. Um, or we could not get involved. Let's believe her, and let's go have a fight. She quickly leads up a steep in up a steep incline, and after a few minutes, you can hear excited charred voices coming from up ahead. The charred are out of sight, 
down an upcoming ravine, so the element of surprise is on your side. I like having the element of surprise. So, now we fight. Okay, so we've got four charred enemies. These are charred warriors. Oh, but I, I have some fatigue because I got fatigued just before this. That is a bummer. That'll make this fight a little bit harder. Uh, these enemies are a little tougher than the Rattlings, and they're going to do a bit more damage up front. But luckily, I drew my Shield Master on the first turn. And I'm going to get rid of that Wild Swing. So I have Rethink, where I can draw two cards and then choose a card to put on the top of your deck. The only other thing I would do with this is discard it to get more, um, more get more willpower. But I don't have any attacks here, so I'm going to go ahead and use Rethink. Now I've drawn two cards, and I have to put one on the back of, uh, back on top of my deck. Unstable Blast is Magic Three. This character is over here. Um, let's go ahead and put Unstable Blast back on the deck because I don't think I can get close enough to do that. I have one willpower. I would need two to do a ranged attack, and I can ranged attack just that enemy from my hunter. I'm going to go ahead and move Jara, and then I'm going to discard this, which will give her some defense. I can move here, and then Flame Fan is really close. So if I move one, two, I could do Flame Fan, and it would hit one enemy. But instead, I'm going to Take this power that says every time you play a card that deals magic damage, gain one willpower. I still have one willpower that will turn into defense if I leave it. Um, and Might, your attack seal bonus damage equal the cost of previous non-move card played. I'm going to discard Might and go ahead and play an attack to get some damage on, the, um, on this enemy. So I didn't get any defense, and um, Jara got some fatigue. So now these enemies, they're going to try and get all the way up in my business and do some damage. They have the ability to get some defense. This enemy is going to be tougher, and this one is going to become prepared, so they're going to get more willpower. So this one has some defense and is in the back and is ha has this power. So they're defending this character pretty well. But this person took to, uh, prepare, and they're the one who already took damage. And they're right next to my fighter. Also, I have a fireball. I can put Fireball right here, and it will damage one, two, three enemies. So that's probably what we're going to build towards. Um, I don't need your melee. I don't need to advance because I'm right next to a bunch of enemies. I do want to go ahead and... Uh, let's see, how much does Fireball do? It does four damage, so I want to do damage here because then Fireball will kill that enemy. We're going to discard this advance. We're going to... Uh, Discard on Stable Blast, and then we're going to do Fireball. That enemy's dead. This enemy has two left on their prepare. This enemy has six um, health. We'll take two to do Flame Fan, so instead I'm going to drop it. I'm going to move behind Jara um, for some defense. And then I can do rain three ranged, or I can use Focus. But if I do some, if I do that ranged, it will get rid of the prepared here, which will put my enemy um, in a bad situation because they won't be gaining any of this willpower. Then I'm going to drop focus, which will give him some more defense, just in case this enemy wants to come over and start a fight. Okay. Fatigue, not fun, because uh, it set in just after or like just before this fight. Oh, so this is not great. When you're outnumbered, your opponent gets to do a combo strike. So because there are three of them, when one of them does an attack on Jara, the other two that are in melee range will do a combo strike where they each deal one damage. So now Jara's in, a, in kind of a bad way. But this enemy only has three health, and now I can try to figure out what to do with her. So I'm going to move here, and I can discard Fighting Time because I need to do stuff now. Unstable Blast, I'll do three damage, and I gain a willpower because I have the cantrip. So that, that blast just kind of 
cost a net zero. I still have two enemies against my one character, which is not great. I'm going to discard the advance, and then I'm going to do, let's see, ranged five. You'd have to move to be able to attack this enemy. If I do, no, I'm not going to be able to, to kill. So this says, range, the headshot says range attack five. Then if the target has three health or less, destroy it. I would need to do both of these attacks, I think, for this range attack to work. Um, I could by discarding both of these swipes. Let's check our math. Power shot. We'll do, this enemy has two defense and five health. So this will take them to seven health because they'll lose this two defense first and then they'll lose three health. This character gets plus two damage on the first attack. So headshot says is a ranged attack three um, as a baseline because right now this ability is active. So if I have, if I take him down to seven and I do three more damage, they'll go from seven to four. Target has three health or less destroyed. So I don't believe this combo will actually kill the enemy. So what we're going to do is do that attack. I'm going to take this here. I'm going to attack this enemy, which gets rid of their prepared. And then I'm going to move, use this, and the hunter gets into combat. Now, this enemy, because this enemy is in combat with another uh, member of my party, they're not going to get to do combo strikes against Jara, which will mean that she, she's a little bit less likely to get knocked out here. But yeah, because this enemy is not um, uh, facing two. That's why the they were able to do the, the combo. So she's not out of the game entirely, but she is going to have an injury when this fight is over. And I don't have my frontline person anymore. So Sunfire is another big power, big card from that um, sun wand I got. Magic attack 9. If this defeats the target, deal 4 ma magic damage to all adjacent characters. If any target is burning, remove all defense before dealing damage. So this is a good second hit against enemies that you've already made burning. This will kill both of these enemies. But I have to do it here because then... Wait, is it 4 magic damage? So it won't kill that one. But I think I can do all this. I'm going to discard prepare and advance. So that's uh, 4. I use swipe. Now this enemy only has one health left, and then I can do Sunfire here. Ta-da! Okay, not great because Jara got injured, but I did win. So, because Jara got injured, this weakness card, the wound, goes into the deck. On draw, discard this card. This will not go away when I um, get better stamina. This has to be removed through Mystic Herbs or by completing a main objective. But I did get the Spirit Vessel. So this gives you a summon. Um, so summon is a card that when you play, it becomes an, a creature on the board. And then you get the ability to draw strength for each friendly summon, defend two on that summon and on yourself. That's pretty cool. Um, and then I get some coins. Now I get to pick one of these characters to level up. Let's go ahead and have our Magician, our elementalist level up. So these different things that I can gain, one of them is on the shock track, storm conduit. After playing a card that deals magic, uh, deals damage, deal two magic damage and inflict shocked to a random enemy within four spaces. So that's, if your elementalist is a little bit closer to the front line, this storm conduit is going to let them do extra damage. Earth grab inflicts immobilized and defend two to all characters in a target area. So you can immobilize enemies, but then they get defense. Or you accept that you're, you have characters that you're not going to move, um, and so you let them be immobilized and you give them defense. So if you had like two melee characters in your team, and then you had your elementalist, maybe you'd use Earth Grab to help um, give them some more sustainability. Or Draining Strike. This is a free melee attack for one damage, but then you gain two willpower. So I'd probably replace Swipe with this. I'm not sure what I want to take. Um, so now I'm going to pause because I'm streaming. I'm going to ask y'all who are watching, 
uh, do you have a preference of one of these that you'd like to see, or should I be upgrading one of my existing powers? So I will show off what you get. Force Missile, same cost, but it deals three damage to the first enemy. Um, actually, three damage to both enemies, so that's a pretty nice upgrade. Unstable Blast goes up by one damage. Swipe goes up by one damage. Advance goes up by one movement. And then Cantrip becomes one cheaper. Um, so yeah, do you all have a suggestion of what you think I should take for my level up? Give y'all a few seconds because of stream delay. And also, um, have any of y'all played this game before? And if not, what are you thinking about it so far? Uh, this is my first time streaming from desktop and my first time streaming after my test uh, in, I don't know, three or four years. I streamed for my PlayStation 4 a few times playing Hyper Light Drifter back in probably 2016, 2017, um, and just fell off of the habit. And I've watched a lot of Twitch and other streaming in the time since then. Um, and I've been meaning to get back into streaming because I think it's a fun way to make video games social in the way that like I used to play video games with friends by like going over to their house or having them over. But with Twitch, I can play video games and have friends come over from all over the world, which is really cool. All right, last uh, last call for uh, level up suggestions. I am inclined to upgrade my force missile. Um, because it's got a lot of versatility. I don't have to line myself up quite in the same way that I do with Unstable Blast. It's been pretty rare that I've been able to get three enemies with Unstable Blast, but Force Missile, it's pretty easy to get um, two enemies and dealing three damage to each of them. Sounds pretty good to me right now. Okay. Um, so I will take that agreed. Uh, uh, do you mean uh, Force Missile, Star-Eyed Green? Wait again here. When I've played this game for for longer, awesome. So I concur. Let's upgrade. Thank you. But we're still tired. So there is a high chance of a fight here. I don't think I want to do that. I only have one mystic herb, so I can't. I don't think I can remove the injury. So there's the question of: Do I go here? Fight again with Jara weakened with the hope that I will get loot in the fight that will give me the Mystic Herb to get rid of her injury. I don't think I want to press my luck just right now, especially because we're tired. So I'm going to save my Mystic Herb, hoping that I'll get another one and I can remove this, um, this injury, and we're going to just rest. That gets her up to six. Not great. I could rest again, which would give another two health. But I think I'm going to go do this fight, and then I can rest again if I really need to. Yeah. Uh, da -da. All right, so ahead of you is a tall, dark, column-like structure with sharp peaks and troughs that make it look like a colossal flickering fire has been frozen in storm. That's really cool. See, like this game has some fun world-building bits. Taking a few steps toward it, the air temperature falls rapidly, and your breath becomes icy. Hmm, that sounds like there could be a Dargan here. Um, maybe not. Malkin volunteers for the task and runs straight for the opening. Inside, there is a spiral stone staircase heading upstairs and a wooden ladder leading downstairs. So, uh, I don't need the food so much. Let's go upstairs. Inside, you find an ancient human man who offers to trade you a spell book in exchange for a vial of soul-scarred blood. Interesting. Um, so... Malkin, I guess, is soul scarred. I didn't know that, I've, or I forgot it. So if I do this, um, Malkin will take some health damage, but I will get a reward. Um, I could offer him payment instead for one of his tomes. Let's do that. 50, 50 obsidian is fine. So let's do that. So this is another item that's only for Malkin, and it is kind of deck manipulation. I can select a card in hand and shuffle a temporary copy into your deck, and the double down says, target a character with a named effect 
create a card in hand that inflicts the same effect for one of its effects. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll take that. That's worth 50 gold, probably. Um, I did not, however, get herbs. And I'm pretty close to getting tired again, so let's just do a quick rest. And now she's up to 10, she's up to 9, and here we go. I'm going to truck along. It's got some, like, glass planes here. You come across a well-armed hybrid corpse, half buried in the rock. As Rastin approaches, the ground underneath begins to give way. The ground itself burned and brittle. So I can try to grab Rastin before they fall uh, further, where I have a low chance of getting a big reward. Or I can make sure to save the corpse and its equipment, which means Rastin will probably get injured or will get injured and take health damage, but we get a better reward. So I'm going to take the lower percentage thing because... Well, actually, when I hit the first... Um, checkpoint everybody will heal an injury so let's be uh let's be more bold because we're streaming and um get some loot so you managed to help rast out of the cavern but not without injury he has a broken leg but this character does not need to move as much so on draw become immobilized until the end of next turn play this card to remove it from the battle but when you remove it from the battle it comes back into your deck the next time you have a battle you have to do something else to permanently get rid of an injury so here's pretty nice. For the cost of two health points, I got a Fortress Shield, which is a purple shield for Jara. Um, I was looking for ways to make her tougher. This will absolutely do it. And I got some um, upgrade materials. So that's pretty cool. Let's go right in here and give her this big shield. Her armor goes up by three. I love to see it. And then we gain Block, which is just, boom, Defend. Shield Wall, which is a power that gives you um, means that if you would lose defense at the start of your turn, because defense doesn't last more than one turn, instead, this power loses one resilience. So as long as this power is up, if uh, Jara builds up a bunch of defense, she can keep it turn by turn, which is really good. And Impenetrable Wall says, whenever you gain defense this turn, gain the same amount again. So all of these have synergy with each other, right? Lock um, means that so if I play, if I have Shield Wall on, and then I play Impenetrable Wall, and then I play Block, I will gain four defense, and then because of Impenetrable Will, I will gain four defense again, and Shield Wall says that I don't lose that eight defense um, between turns. Instead, Shield Wall loses one resilience. That's fantastic. I've got the Spirit Vessel, which she can't use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give that to Rastin. No. Um, because, yeah, because this goes in this slot and Rastin already has something there, I'm going to give it to Malkin instead, where it goes over in this slot. And I've got this book, excuse me, and this can go in any of these three. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. And now there's a bunch of stuff in her deck. So I'm less likely to draw any one card, but the quality of cards has uh, increased. Like there's more cards that do more powerful things. So that's great. Now let's go over to these ruins and see what's there. So we've got potential for a hard battle. You observe a group of hybrid raiders picking over a destroyed caravan. Some of the attackers are preparing to move out with a share of the captured loot while the others pick apart the remaining wagon. Hi all to the folks who have uh, just dropped in. Thank you so much. Um, Again, if you are if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Michael Underwood. I write as Michael R. Underwood. This is my channel, Turbo Tango, which is a combination of a nickname I had in uh, high school and college back in Indiana and um, the dancing style that I did in grad school, uh, Argentine Tango. So thanks for being here. I'm guessing that most of you uh, know me from somewhere else on the internet, um, but regardless of why you're here, welcome. Thanks for coming. And uh, please let me know how you're enjoying the game. And if you're having any difficulty with game audio or with me or balance between them, please let me know and I'll try to fix it. You observe a group of hybrid, hybrid raiders picking over uh, a destroyed caravan. Some of the attackers are preparing to move out with a share of the captured loot while others pick apart the remaining wagon. So I said that, just refreshing myself. Um, so I can attack the larger group before the others move off to try to get the best of the loot. I can wait for the group to split up and ambush the remaining hybrid, or I can leave the group. So let's try the hard fight again. 
So this is three hybrid slavers. Slavers are terrible. Screw slavers. I'm going to beat the crap out of them. Cool. So I've got Rethink, which will let me draw cards and put something on top of my deck, which is probably a good idea because I have two cards that are very expensive. Now here, Sunfire is going to be more useful than Fireball because the enemies are not clumped up. Nine is not quite enough to kill one of these enemies. Um, but let's see what our options are. So I've got Headshot. Um, so Headshot plus Fireball or plus Sunfire would kill one of these enemies. I think my goal is going to be to try to kill one of these enemies this turn. What are my options for doing that? So if I put Shieldmaster down and then do block, I'll go up to six um, block here. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to discard charge for the movement. And I'm going to put Shieldmaster on and block. Cool. So that gives me uh, six defense. I'm going to go ahead and move her up as basically a, into taunting position where I want these enemies to come at her. But she's got this six defense, which is great. I'm going to discard swipe because right now he can't see anybody. If I go here, he is defended, but he has sight. But now to get to three, I'm going to have to discard one. Um, let's do rethink because that gives us extra cards. And hmm, I could get a mad soul. Yeah, let's go ahead and discard that. And... Uh, Am I overly aggressive trying to do the Sunfire here? I could discard these two and then have the Mad Soul and put it like here to get another creature on the board. Um, discard both of those or I discard... So this is three, uh, three willpower worth of things I maybe want to plague. I guess maybe I want to try and get focus on him, which will help for next time. I have one two, three cards to discard, so I um, I should be able to do that. One, two, three. So I place the Mad Soul there, and I've got one focus, and I put the uh, one willpower, I put focus on here. So this is, I didn't do the Blitz start here, where I tried to burn down one enemy entirely, but I've got this uh, extra enemy, uh, extra person on the board, which will be able to intercept the Slaver, because there, there are no spaces down here. If you look, this hex does not complete, so this is not um, a part of the board you can actually move on. So the board goes like this, which means if this enemy wants to get to um, the Malkin, they have to go through this Mad Soul. And then I've got Jara up front here. So I feel pretty good about that. Now let's see what the enemy has up their sleeves. So reel in, range attack one, and then pull three spaces. So they're getting this Mad Soul out of position, because maybe this enemy is going to come. And it looks like they're just going to... Cool, they got rid of it. That didn't do any health points. But then this enemy is reeling in Jara, which exposes Rastin. But they didn't do any extra damage on him. And Rastin can still see this, this enemy. Again, every time I play a card that deals range damage, I wanna, I'm going to gain one willpower. So I can discard this and do an improvised attack. I get a willpower. If I then store up one more, I can do a power shot, and then I'll get another willpower. She does not need to move here. So let's do this again. And then I get a willpower. And then I can do a swipe, which will take him down to four. But let's take a look here. Fireball, if I do it here, it will hit both of these enemies. But it won't then kill that enemy. Um, I don't have enemies that have named effects, but... If I do Fireball, then the enemy will be burning, and then I could double down to create a card in hand that inflicts the same effect for one of its effects. And I think I'm going to do that, and do that, and let's do a Fireball. Yeah, let's do go ahead and do a Fireball here and count on Jara to be able to do some survive, survivability. So I'm going to target them, and now I have a Flame Fan, and I can discard it, to do I want to do damage? No, uh, if I so if I discard it, I'll get yeah, I want to do this because then that will put defense on these two other characters. Jar will be a little bit more vulnerable, but she has more armor now. 
more real in. These are slavers, so they've got a lot of abilities that will move their enemies. This is not great because now, again, she's outnumbered, and so there's going to be combo strikes. But those enemies were burning, and so they just lost some of their defense. I'm going to go ahead and do Impenetrable Wall because it also draws a card. And then I can put this on, and it says, whenever, uh, defend two after performing a melee attack. So I can discard this, and I can do that, which will give me some extra defense. And I get four instead of two because of um, the, the shield wall ability, or whatever that was called. So four defense, pretty good. I'm still kind of outnumbered in this way. So I'm going to advance, and then I'm going to do that and move up here. He's got an improvised attack, so he can do some damage. I don't have the summon anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and move her. And then I'm going to move again to here. And I'm going to Magic Missile. And I'm going to have him discard to get some defense. So now I'm hoping that she's okay. She might not be okay. I maybe should have gotten her out of the way. Broken Leg for Rastin, which is not great. Wound for Jara, also not great. So there's all her defense. How many more attacks do they have? At least one. Defend, 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 and one more attack. So she's not quite out, but she is very hurt. This enemy only has one health left, though. So I've got a Flame Fan which will do three damage and inflict burning. Let's do this. I'm going to move her here so that she's not as outnumbered. I'm going to discard this, discard this, and I discard everything and try to get some, some something else that I can do. So Power Shot is ranged, but it's only ranged, and he is immobilized, so he can't move this turn. So I can't do any ranged attacks but I can put this prepare down, I can discard both of these, and then I can have her move one, have her move two, and then do flame fan. And now this enemy has is fighting two, and so they're, my enemies are much less likely to be able to um, do a big combo attacks to knock her out entirely. And I have one one thing left, so yeah, that's that's what I can do. Um, okay. Broken leg again. Oh, they have two attacks, so Jara's out again. So now this is not a great situation because there's three of them, two of us. He's immobilized. She is in a bad time. Um, so I'm going to select Unstable Blast and get an extra copy in my deck. So right now I can't do that, but I can move here and then do Unstable Blast, and that enemy is just gone. And that enemy is just gone. So now I can play this to remove it from battle, and I can do that, but I'm still mobilized. This enemy is probably going to go after Malkin, and we'll see if she can survive the round. Thanks so much for coming by, Star-Eyed Green. All right, so I did not get got. Instead, the enemy took on a bunch of defense. So from here, I cannot hit you. So let's discard this, and we're going to move. And Improvised Attack can be a melee, so let's go ahead and do that. And I get Combo Strike. We're going to do that to you. And then we're going to move here, and Unstable Blast. That gets rid of their Prepared. And we're going to discard that so that he's got some more defense as well. Okay, more damage on Malkin, which is not great. So if I do Burning Hand, it will hurt Raston, which is not what I want. So instead, we're going to let him be be cool guy 
and do a headshot because the enemy had less than uh, had three or less health left after that attack. It was just dead. So Jara is hurt again, which is not good. But I did get a cool sword. So this is a purple sword, and a long sword, which will improve her attack abilities. And I've got some gold, some more gold, some upgrade items, a tower shield, which is not as good as the super cool tower shield. Um, but I could put it on Rastin, which is a curious option. Alpha Strike, melee attack three. Combo strikes triggered by this attack deal plus one damage. So that would let him move toward being more of a, a mixed melee and ranged character, uh, which where he could go in and help kind of have Jara's back, which sounds like a pretty good idea. Shelter says move to any to any other friendly character, then defend to and activate that character. That's another way of being able to to help. Because move it says move to any. Um, so Rasta could just move across the board, which actually sounds pretty cool. Overwatch says range attack three. If this card is in your hand after an enemy moves and is in line of sight. Play a random range attack card on it for free. So a random range attack card is just going to be some range attack card, I think, from Rastin's deck. So instead of playing the card to do that damage, you can hold it in your hand and wait, and then use that Overwatch to kind of do these extra, extra shots, which is pretty cool. So take aim says all attacks on a single target deal bonus damage equal to the resilience of this power. After attacking, this power loses one resilience. So It'll do plus three damage, then plus two damage, then plus one damage, then it'll get rid of itself. But it'll also go down if the character takes damage along the way. I, I'm i going to take Shelter and um, put it in, in... What should I have it be instead of? So it's, it's a move ability, but I kind of want to keep that willpower. So it's going to be instead of a swipe. I'm going to take all this. To continue and then we're going to do some upgrades cool we've got this so charge is still good this is armor so i kind of want to go ahead and give this to i'm going to give it to oh let's this is that's fine i'm going to give that to you then you can have these wraps because he already has um, that ability that I, the card I just gave him that does some defense. So Protector is going to get more traction there. And upping his armor to four means that I should be a little bit, feel a little bit better about letting him get into some um, melee combat. So we're doing okay. We've got some injuries, which is not great. We've also lost a lot of health. So I'm going to go ahead and rest. Now I have enough. Um, Kind of crafting items that I can upgrade an item or I can hone an item. Honing items, you remove a single card from a an item. So I want this one, but I don't want that one. I think instead I want to do upgrades. So if I upgrade, then basically you, when you upgrade a card, it tends to upgrade um, upgrade an item. It like upgrades all the cards, or sometimes it'll like increase the quality or something like that, which is pretty cool. So I could upgrade this bow to get my headshot better. I could upgrade this to improve charge. Do this. Now rethink would mean draw three cards and then put two back on the deck. So I don't net any more cards, but I have greater choice. You know, or hand wraps. Yeah, I think I want to go ahead and upgrade this bow because she has two purple items. She has one purple item. He doesn't have any purple items just yet. So, and this is also a rest. So I'm going to get the upgrade and we're going to get the rest bonus. So these characters are back up to six. Back. I don't have enough to upgrade again because I used a lot of upgrade materials. And I don't think I want to hone item. So now I'm going to keep going and I'm going to hope to find some nice things. So let's look at what these are. So this is, there's basically no chance of a fight. So I do want to go over there. Amid the charred stumps and roots in the remains of a forest, you come across a human man covered in mud and leaf litter camouflage. He tells you that a band of hybrid deprived him of his farm and crops, so he is forced to subsist on fungi and beetles. 
Um, what is his request? Okay, so he he needs food. I could give him one food and get a reward. I could say that we don't have any anything to spare anything. Or I could put him out of his mystery, and I would gain a trait. The trait's probably something like cruel, or you're a terrible person. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and give some food, even though I only have two. But here's what I got. I got a Mystic Herbs, which will mean I have two, which means I can cure an injury. And I got a Blackened Tomb, um, which is like a debuff. It gives uh, debuff abilities, which is pretty cool. Let's look at that for her. I do have spot for it. Yeah, I like that. There's a lot of cards in my deck now. It makes means that this like fire stuff is a little bit less. Uh, I'm gonna get to it less often, but I like all of these things. And my general approach has been to make a bigger deck, and try to benefit from how often you're able to draw these more powerful cards. Not perfect, but it's been pretty good to me so far. So here's a town. I definitely want to go to this town. You can just about make out a young female hybrid with her arms and head chained to the remains of a sturdy building. She is surrounded by a mob of ratlings who are throwing clumps of something foul-smelling at her. So, my options. Try to help the prisoner by running back into square, warning the villagers of an impending attack by, attack by a dragon. There will not be a dragon. Probably. Or I could attempt to sneakily steal some obsidian from a couple of members of the crowd and not help uh, the young hybrid. Or I can ignore the scene and try to see if I can find a, uh, a traitor. I do want a shop, but I also want to be a good person. You're not entirely sure if this risky plan will work, but you acted out with as much gusto as you can muster. However, when you return to the square, the crowd has begun to disperse and the lifeless body of the hybrid hangs limply against the deserted building. Well, that sucks. Tried to help. Could not. But I do find a trader who is willing to barter with me. So I can sell these items. That gives me five. That gives me 20. Now I have 186, which means I could buy that spear. And we'll note that Raston could use that, but it will replace the bow that I just spent um, resources to upgrade. This helm is really good. It would only go on Jara, but it's more expensive um, than what I have. I could like take items off my characters and sell them, but I don't think I want to do that. Rusted plates. Move two, defend three, and gain one willpower. Shuffle an exhausted card into your deck. So that's not great. This is not a, an awesome item, but it will also give more armor to Jara, who I think really needs it. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that, and then I'm going to buy two food. It gets me down to 46, which is not a lot of um, obsidian, but I really needed that food. And so this is the objective. I'm still pretty good on this. I'm close. I think I'm going to wander around and look at other things I can do close to that objective. So I'm going to go ahead and rest now. I'm going to heal injury. So here's the question. Do I get rid of one of two wounds on Jara so that She's not basically drawing cards she can't use as often. Or to get rid of Broken Leg, which is more debilitating. I think I'm going to get rid of Broken Leg. So he's up to 10. He's at 10. They're both at 8 now. I could rest again for a little bit more hit points. But I'm going to break camp. I'm going to see, can I go down here? Yes, yeah, so there's a fight. What are you? Probably a battle and some stuff. Yeah, let's go this way. I will probably run into this enemy. Yeah. You, a, the pack of Ozalids. Ozalids are a vicious pack-hunting predator. Um, so they have some, like, pack communication abilities. So I could throw out some food to distract the beasts. Let's have a fight. So there's four of them. They have nine health each. They're probably going to have good movement and, like, combo attack capabilities, if I remember correctly, and based on how they were described. So Sunfire would just kill one of them, which does not suck. This doesn't do burning, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Horse Missile would be pretty nice for a lot less health. So Critical Strike, this came from my sword. Melee attack 3, all damage bonuses count quadruple. I don't have anything that would give me damage bonuses just yet, yeah, but this is obviously like a combo card. Advance, power shot, improvised attack, 
So Power Shot plus Improvised Attack will not quite kill one of these enemies. Advance gets me to here. Another Discarding another move gets me uh, would get me to there. And if I get somewhere in attack, I will give defense to my other characters, which is pretty good. But let's... Let's move there. Let's move here. So all those using those moves, I got where more toward I want where I wanted to be, and I gained willpower, which is good. So what am I gonna do next? I could just sunfire to take one of them off the board. Boom, done. And then I would still have other cards. So let's go ahead and do that. We love to see it. So she used some Sunfire for three. Force Missile will cost two. We're going to discard that. Maybe I'll have her move, maybe not. Improvised Attack. Now I don't have view on anybody. So I'm going to move here to do that. And then I'm going to move there. I'm going to discard this Power Shot. Let's do Critical Strike, which will do damage and will give defense to these other characters. Now she's a little backed up. If both of these get onto her, that could be bad, but they will have to have used probably two movement cards to get there. We'll see. I may be too bold. So that's one move, two moves, some combo damage. They got some defense. That's a lot of defense. Not great. Gotta say, not great. So Mad Soul will let me get another person on the board. If I get over to here, I can do Unstable Blast on both of them. I can probably have her move away by discarding one of these. Yeah, so I can get back here. Let's have him move to here. I can have a max of two enemies on him. I'm going to do that to get four defense for her. Let's do that. Power Shot. And then one. So if I discard this, I could get to there and do this Unstable Blast. Or I could do the, the Soul. Yeah. Nope. I, I counted wrong. Wait. What's, what's going on here? Oh, okay. So I have to not move. So if I discard Cantrip, then I can have the Mad Soul go there. Sorry. So now this is right. This character also backs him up if anybody is trying to get to here. And I believe that when you move into an enemy's like threatened space, if we're using D&D language, you have to stop. So they would have to do two move cards to get to here. Um, and this Anjara can only be attacked by one enemy unless they get all the way around here, and even so, um, they will be outnumbered up. So he's probably now in better shape. Move, move, more moving. Yeah, so they really back each other up. Yeah, look at all that defense. But now I have a, another a fourth character on the board. I have a charge, which I could go... Charge is move three. One, two, three. So that would put her back into harm's way which would be not great, but I could also do one, two, three, or one, two, or one, two, no, it's probably just two to move her to here to attack. And I have shield wall, but I would need to gain defense for shield wall to be relevant. He's in melee. Um, do you have, you don't have that thing that's, you have to use that card to get the the bonus defense or whatever it is. So range attack six, then if the target has four health or left, left. So I can do that. So I can go to here, and then I can discard, discard this, and then I have headshot, which kills you. So now there's only two enemies. Um, that will do three damage. Let's discard might and discard swipe, which give me some more stuff. Let's go there. Let's, let's see if I can do that. 
that will let the enemy yeah let's go here because that gets me a combo strike now it's there and this enemy is tying up that enemy so they won't be able to combo strike on me and we'll get that and then i will gain some defense A lot of damage, but not enough to finish her off. So let's use impenetrable wall. Let's have defensive stance. Let's use faint. It says adjacent enemy loses four defense, then draw a card. This may provoke um, combo strikes. You're the only one with defense, and doing so that gave me defense. So let's draw cards. And. Let's get rid of this. So if I discard this, I can get to there. I would need to move again to be able to then use curse this way. See? So let's get rid of that. Um, can I? No, that's not gonna. It's not gonna do this for me. Let's get rid of those. But I can do fireball. And this has fire. So let's do, bam. Nice. And then we'll get rid of that. We'll move here so that then when I use this, this will do a combo strike. Yep. So I didn't get Jara's defense engine going fast enough, and that's why she took a lot of damage. So I need to think about that and probably not send her into, into danger without some defense stacked on. But I got two food, some obsidian. That's all very nice. And, oh, I didn't put the rusted plates on Jura, so that's one problem. Let's do that right away. That gives me more armor. We go back here, and I can level somebody up. Let's level her up again. Weakened, which will also give her some more survivability, because weakened characters deal minus three damage on their next attack and cannot perform time. Combo strikes. So that sounds pretty good. Um, I also have Goad. All attacks deal plus one damage per adjacent enemy. Or Bulwark. Spend one, defend seven, which is great. Counter Strike. Melee attack four, then draw a card. This card cannot be played. Cancel this restriction when you are the target of a melee attack. So you get attacked, then you get to Counter Strike. I think I'm going to do Tackle. I'm using Tackle to replace wild swing that I don't really tend to use. I've made her deck now cost a lot less by putting in a zero cost card in replace of a three cost card. So that's pretty good. This ruin will have a battle, but also some equipment, food, but then I can rest there. I don't know about that. Let's go over here. Okay, what about you? You will also probably have a battle. Okay. You have a low chance of a battle. You have a high chance of a battle. You have a very high chance of a battle. Okay. I'm going to be tired by the time I get here, I think. Nope. Okay, cool. So this is a merchant. I can get rethink. I can buy some food. If I sell a couple more things, I could get running shot, which might be handy. But I think I'm just going to buy two things of food and sell that. But also, it turns out this uh, trader has a rare cured spike back hide that promised to a rattling predator in a nearby town. He offers a cut of the profit if the party will deliver the hide on his behalf. So this is a side quest. I will take him up on the offer. The trader thanks you and fetches a large bound parcel from the back of the damaged building. Gives you rough directions to the rattling town and wishes Jara luck. So... Party has been entrusted with delivering a rare spike back hide to a powerful rattling, rattling praetor. So this is the side quest in, indicator. Let's go ahead and rest. I think I'm going to do the main objective, and then we're going to go to the side quest. I don't have the mystic herbs to treat another injury, but I could upgrade an item. I could upgrade rethink. Nah, I'm not that excited about it. She has so little health, I think I do want to rest again. 
Six is not great, but see my morale is wavering. I need to go and do this main quest. So my morale is increasing as I head toward the main quest. And I'm hoping that by the time I get there, nope, still wavering. So you come across what must be the ruin that Naya described in her writings. Rasta noticed, uh, notices a huge spined creature moving through the rubble. You approach cautiously, hoping to avoid confrontation with the massive beast. Spoilers, you can't avoid confrontation with the massive beast. Um, you quickly lose sight of the creature within the rubble and get the feeling that you have become the prey. Without warning, the huge spikeback drops down from above, trying to pin Malk into the ground with her, a razor-sharp leg. Bite. So this is a boss. The razorback, uh, the spikeback, has barbed spines. All ranged attacks deal plus one damage. So if I let this just move around and attack me, it's going to range attack me in a bad in a bad way. So I want to try and get up in its business. But I believe, if I remember correctly, it has a lot of movement cards. Um, yep, so you'll see here. One fly, wing smash moves enemies away, and then running shot lets you move and attack. Hit and run, I think, is attack and then move. So this is going to be hard to pin this enemy down. Block for Jara right off the bat. And then we'll do this. I'm going to let them come to me a little bit because I do have some cover. And I think I can fireball just from all the way over here, which will inflict burning, which is nice, but it won't do any health damage just yet. I could get an extra fireball in my deck, which sounds pretty cool, actually. Let's prepare. Let's discard advance. Um, two, three. Yes, I have enough. So I'm going to double fireball and put that other fireball in my deck. One, two, three, fireball. And this, they're now burning. Yeah, the whole page is for fight because you don't have any other options, but good to see you, Trifity Maths. Thanks for coming by. Okay, so while I was uh, uh, chatting, the spike back moved a bunch, attacked Rastin, and now he's down to eight, so all of his armor is gone, which is not great. But he also has a block. And I'm not going to be doing as much ranged attacking, but I can ranged attack from here. So now I want to get her into the fight. Do I want to try to fireball before I do this? So if I get armored advance, I move two. One, two. Not quite enough. Um, faint. Well, let me draw a card and provoke combo strikes. I don't have enough movement to get her around to there, which is what I would need to do to flank them. Unstable Blast, I'm way too far away for that. So let's move there so I'm sort of in proximity. Let's do the Fireball now, which also means that they're burning again. We're going to do Armored Advance, and we put that Exhausted in my deck. Um, if I Faint, that will get me up to... Uh, I will be able to move, and then I have one to attack, but Power Shot is ranged attack five. So instead, we're going to discard this, discard that, we're going to move them, and we're going to move her into melee, but then I'm going to do that ranged shot. So now they have to move away to do a ranged attack, and it's going to be harder for them to see Rastin um, because Jar is in the way and has seven defense. And getting all the way around to get to Malkin, probably a little tricky, because I think these block uh, line of sight. So that's a wound, so she's only going to have two cards this turn. Hit and run. Melee attack two and draw a movement card. So volley fire, whenever you play a card, do a random range attack. That's not great. I want that to go away. But uh, they took some fire damage. However, volley fire has 11 health. Whenever you play a card, random range attack two, and then this card, this power loses one resilience. That sucks for me. So I'm gonna move up here. Headshot is range attack six, but yeah, it's way too much health. Um, so we're gonna rethink because it lets, nets me cards. They don't have burning right now. So I'm gonna discard that. I need to get her into the fight. 
close enough that she can use something like magic missiles. So let's move to, there's moving one. Let's get a cantrip for you. Let's discard that for defense. Discard that for defense. Headshot. Discard that for defense. So I didn't pin them down, so they're going to be able to do more ranged attacks. Which is not great. Oof! Heep! That's very bad. Very bad for me. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's move there and defend. Let's impenetrable wall. Let's move and run away. And I can magic missile. That's good. So named effect. So hit. And then put the mad soul there. Uh, you can't range attack from here. No. So you're going to get more health too. I'm going to move you back there. So it's going to be hard. It'll, this enemy is going to have to kill the Mad Soul before it can get to Jara. Not if it flies. What? Why did you do that? You could have killed her. The AI did a bad. They did not do the thing they should have done. So um, let's see. I have Might. I can get rid of that. Um, want all right we gotta we gotta start doing the doing the thing so i can move her to here and then to there and then i can do curse which inflicts defenseless which means the enemy may not gain defense i can do some damage i can have him move do a power shot, have him move again, swipe, and we did it. Uh, hi, Maneko 2. Yeah, it's uh, the AI is not good here. Uh, it, it made the wrong choice. But I, as a human, also sometimes make the wrong choice. So here we go. So this is a legendary item. It has the potential to be several different things. Um, let's decide what it's going to be, and then I'll decide which of these two to um, that I do want to level up. So I can get a the Dunta Duntag's crown, a named item. Um, it has a so gold items have like a special power, um, a special ability that they uh, that they get. The first time your talent triggers each turn, refresh it. So the talent is the bonus damage on ranged attack, give defense, your first thing is uh, cost minus one. So Duntag's Crown on um, Malkin would be cool for the magic, but let's look at what the cards are. Move four, then defend one per moved. Aggression, after you play move card, deal two melee damage to adjacent enemies. Battle ready, each character. Yeah, so this is going to be a Jara thing. Oh, and it can only be a Jara thing. Or I can have Nebula's Star. Um which says plus one willpower every turn. So that's just like every turn I'm going to start with one, one more willpower. Every time you take one damage, take one additional damage. Oh, that's bad. That's bad for me. But it does have great things. It has rally where you spend two willpower to gain four. Channeling, spend two willpower to gain six. So that's a lot of willpower at the cost of taking more damage. Or I could have Fury of the Elements, but that goes in a slot where I already have a purple. It says, whenever you inflict any named effects on an enemy with no existing named effects, inflicts one extra stack. That's pretty good. Um, but it would replace all those big fire attacks. Or I could get Soul Gem, which is a legendary upgrade uh, crafting material. Yeah, let's take that crown. Uh, I, I just need to keep making her tougher because I'm not playing um, defensively enough. And let's go ahead and level up Malkin. So I can get a Stone Barrier, which lets me defend four on any character. Again, more sustainability. Charged weapon, which is a melee. Evocation, all cards deal plus one damage for every character they hit, up to a maximum of plus three. 
So that's really good for any of those like fireball type of attacks. Intensify, increase the duration of all named effects on all characters by two. So I think I want evocation instead of um, one of these unstable blasts. Oh, everybody gets to level up. So yeah, because it's a, a mini boss. All right, so I can do take aim, which is that thing. So I do have that summoner power. So I could take glass lizard, which costs three, but then has five health and does two damage. Also, it has melee and range, res range resistance of one. So this is a tough little lizard. I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glass lizard in instead of one of the improvised attacks. But now this character has a little bit more, um, is more of a summoner, is going to be able to get more things onto the board, which is great. Or did I give you the thing, the summoner thing? Oh, I gave you the summoner thing. That's fine. Because this says for each friendly summon, um, not each summon that's your summon. And who else do I, who do I want to level up again? Let's level her up again. Pommel Strike, which is melee attack one. Your next melee attack, um, your next melee attack card played this turn costs zero willpower. So it's really good for like stacking attacks. Rush, draw one movement card, challenging stride, goad. All right, so this is, it's not as much damage as a swipe, but I can basically then get another attack for free. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take everything, continue. It appears Naya has been here. Jara points out some, oh. I don't know about that grammar on that. It appears Naya has been here, comma, Jara points out. Um, you should have quotes here. Uh, Jara points out some writing carved into a stone slab by the point uh, of a weapon. Yes, no, just, okay, whatever. The writing is a message to any voiders, which is people um, who are soul scarred who have used the power. So that's why you're magic, because you're soul scarred. Okay, cool. The writing is a message to any voiders following and describes where Naya has gone next. Leaving a trail like this is a dangerous gamble, but as you have uh, little else to go on, the party decides to follow the clues to your next destination. Follow in her footsteps. Continue to follow Naya's clues to find out where she has gone. Continue. Yay, so um, Jara recovers. Now they're not injured anymore, and I got some more loot. So this strength potion... Looks really good. This is a um, uncommon upgrade material and more mystic herbs and some food. So all of this is good times. So let's first go here up to armor 10. That's great. This gives me some mobility. It lets me use my talent again. And the talent is anytime I play a card when I'm adjacent to an enemy. And I just got the pommel strike, which is has synergy with playing multiple melee attacks. So this is these are uh, combining really nicely. However, now I have a Flawless Strength Potion, which gives a big expensive attack, a Shield Bash, and a Wind Up, and a Speed Potion. So let's give the Strength Potion here and the Speed Potion there, because you already have things in all of your slots. So now she has a full kit. He has everything except one and could use some new armor. Um, I think that is everything. Yes. Cool. So you've got three armor, you've got ten, you've got four. And so the sub, uh, the side quest is that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before I head back over here. So this is going to be another fight. As you approach a large ruined structure, there is a strange animal cry, and with, within moments, a few humanoid picture, uh, figures emerge from the dark. A few humanoid pictures. They're like Polaroids. Uh, they have clearly set up to ambush passersby. I'm passersby. You can't ambush me. I mean, you, you're attacking me, but I don't feel ambushed because you're not like going first or something. So we've got a bandit archer and some bandit robbers. So I want to get rid of this one early if I can, because I've got two and two. So these are going to be up close and these two are going to do ranged. But I drew a bunch of powerful cards. I can't, like, I don't have movement here, so... I'm not going to be able to use all of this. Biding time doesn't do anything for me right now because these are both cost zero. So I'm going to discard that. We're going to move here. Um, however, I could discard that and then get to redraw for two, which I think I'm going to do. 
Um, I can't get you inside anywhere else. So I'm going to play double effort, and then I'm going to go ahead and pick curse. And then I'm going to give might to you. Let's play impenetrable wall because it lets me draw a card. Okay, so if I have four, each character creates two cards in hand from a choice of Shiv, Simple Shot, and Guard. So this is really powerful, but it costs four. However, I already have two. One, two, there's four. So for uh, him, I'm going to do Simple Shot and Guard. For her, let's do Guard, Guard. And for Malkin, let's do two Simple Shots. I can discard Curse to move here and now do Simple Shot, Simple Shot, which is great because um, I was getting that bonus from Might. And the, I don't think I can, yeah, I can't recycle this to then get move, but I can play this and now she's got a ton of defense. They're going to do put some into her, except I'm going to move and cover. And I'm going to use my guard to get four, and then I'm going to kill that one. So now there's only three enemies on the board. I've got a, just a huge amount of guard on Jar, which means I can send her rushing into fight next turn. And Malkin is covering, or um, Rustin is covering Malkin. Maybe they'll get through this armor. This guy's going to come around. We'll see what happens. So move. So got around, did some damage there, some, set up some defense. So now uh, he did not lose anything more. I can do my Mad Soul. So now I can do Sunfire. Um, if this defeats the target, deal four ma magic damage to all adjacent character. If any character is burning, remove all defense. So if I can do two damage to this one, I can then do Sunfire, which will do four damage to this one. Or if I can do one damage here, then I can do Sunfire, um, and then it'll do damage over here. But if I run Jara in, she will also take that damage. Um, but I've got this, I've got a, a fair amount of guard. So if you play a move card, deal two dam damage to all adjacent enemies. So I don't have a move card but I can move here and then I can do this and I can do shield bash for six, which is pretty great. And I refresh my talent. So she could do this again if she really needed to, but I don't think she's going to. I'm gonna do get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that and headshot because that gets rid of that one. I'm not gonna be able to get to three here. So I'm gonna instead discard these two and I'm gonna put a mad soul right there and then I'm going to get bonus damage on my next attack because of what I just spent. So I didn't get to use my, my cool burst fire damage thing, but I feel pretty decent about where I am right now. They didn't get to do combo strike. So now I can move this guy around the back if I wanted to. Um, within range three, so that's fine. So I'm going to advance over there, and I'm going to advance here. And that's when you defend yourself. Now that's not going to come up just yet. And so if I use Fireball, it's going to hit one of my friends, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, but I can do Draw Strength now, and I can get def defense on it and me. And I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to play Adrenaline. And I'm going to do Pummel Strike here because then there's two combo strikes. I can have the Mad Soul just get rid of that enemy. And then I can do charge here. I'm not going to do the extra damage because I didn't move, but I still feel pretty good about all of that. I could move her in right into combat. Yeah, I'm going to do that because that, that pins you down uh, even more so. And you've got seven defense. Because this is all still guard, um, because you uh, because you've got all this armor, shelter, so I can move here, and defend. And then I can move four. And defend, 
and I just use my ability, and then I can use my ability again to swipe, and that's going to defend on my on my allies more. Boom, like that. Which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to shield master here. I'm going to get rid of both of these because I'm going to move you to there and then power shot and we're done. Much better job. Good job, self. Victory. Okay. Um, I got a cleaver, which I could replace my upgraded axe. Pull target enemy within two spaces, then melee attack four and inflict defenseless. That's pretty good. Um, or chop. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably replace that. And then let's level up Malcolm. Inferno. He, every character takes four magic damage per stack of burning. I don't have that much burning because my deck is really big, so I don't know that I'm going to take that. Ice block. Defend six. Inflict chilled on all enemies within two spaces and activate this character. Hmm. Interesting. Evocation. I think I'm going to upgrade the other force missile. After your visit, uh, your victory, you set about exploring the structure. All but a shrine to Igna, who is a goddess of fire, have the word dead scrawled upon, across the floor. Okay, so it's like a, all the other gods are dead, just Igna, that kind of deal. And I got some more loot. So Bone Sword, which I basically have replaced, and some food. So I can, I can sell that Bone Sword if I need to. This is also a shelter. I probably want to do that because she did take some damage. So let's shelter. And then I think I'm going to take just a very quick um, bio break to top off my water and use the restroom. But I can upgrade a blue. I could upgrade this tower shield. Yeah, let's do that. So that also counted as a rest. She's at nine. I could upgrade items more. Mm. Yeah. Let's go ahead and upgrade that. So it'll make the curse better. And now she's back at she's at full, which is excellent. And now I'm going to throw up my back in a minute card where you should not hear me and the camera should go away.
Okay, we're back. Hey, everybody. Thank you for uh, sticking with me while I take a quick break. Uh, it's actually not good for me to sit for hours and hours and hours on end and not use the restroom because uh, how bodies work. Uh, so that's that. I'm going to try to make sure to have breaks be just an expected part of what streams are when I'm streaming because that's going to be better for me. So I have to go to this side quest, so let's get going. All right. A strange bluish fire erupts from a, a ground here. You know, just everyday eruption of strange bluish fire. Malkin identifies this phenomenon as a soul fire, and it is possible your soul-scarred group will be able to absorb the experience of some of those obliterated by the cataclysm by entering the fire. So we could take damage and get a free level. Yeah, let's do that. Um, four and five damage is a lot. That's more than I was expecting. But so it goes. Um, so if you level up, then the lizard gets way tougher. That's pretty cool. But I could also do cover shot, range attack three. Then if you are adjacent to an obstacle, defend four. That's really nice. Flare, inflict exposed to all enemies in a target area. Exposed means they take additional damage from any source. Pinning attack, follow up. It's range attack three or range attack four. Let's upgrade that lizard. That sounds fun. I don't think I've upgraded that uh, the, the lizard before. What are you? You are probably materials. That's fine. Throughout, uh, through their constant heroism in the face of danger, Malkin has become an inspiration to the rest of the party. That sounds great. Inspirational. Activate all friendly characters, then draw a card. So this is a boon. This is a positive trait. And that's just really good. A trait is a permanent addition to your hero's core deck that provides a unique bonus or disadvantage. This is a bonus. We love it. And we're going to go over here and maybe do some shopping. As you move into the town, uh, the main square, it seems like the entire town is here. One member of the crowd tells you they've all assembled for the fallow field axe throwing, where the onlook where onlooker, probably onlookers, compete to cut down executed criminals from the gallows. Okay. So I could maybe steal some stuff. I could maybe get some money. I think I'm just going to wait and shop. Um, I don't know. Well, this is what gives does give one quality. I don't need this. That gives me enough so that I can have 70, which is a breastplate. Gives me defensive stance. No, I think I'm just going to take the money and go. Um, this is a cleaver. It replaces my charge. I do like having charge, but grapple is like the reverse of charge and it increases my quality, which lets me do redraws. So. Let's go for that. Here is that. I don't need rest just yet. Hopefully this won't be a fight. It was a fight. Wah, wah. As you approach the, rat, approach the rattling town, you are ambushed by a group of well-armed humans. The leader demands you hand over the package you had been asked to deliver. No. This will be, this will suck a bit because we are down some health. But this is again, two archers and two robbers. I do have my lizard, so that's pretty cool. So he can move four, which is really nice, and gain willpower. Um, you can, you're gonna move right up because you get to defend when you do it, and that's really good. Um, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. I am gonna put the lizard on because then I can draw strength and then you can prepare but if man double attacking would be really nice and it would give defense to all of them so I'm gonna do that no I can't do that because I have to spend one of the one of those willpower but I can I can do the wall and see no no, I can just hold on to this double strike and put prepare on you. Because now you've got the lizard next to you. Um, so now they're closing in. Positioning. Dead eye on this one. 
and another attack. So now all of her defense is gone. But now this lizard is in position and can move over there. Named effect. Do I have anything that's going to give a named effect this turn? I don't think so. But I can move to a character and, def uh, and defend and then activate. This says to just gain the will. So let's move there. Very nice. And let's attack because then I'll get the combo strike. And we'll just spend that. Do this. The feint is not doing anything, but it will prov will provoke combo strikes. But I can't. I have to move. Can you move to there and then attack? Yes. Okay, that's silly. You could attack from there. Now you're in her way. I want her to get to there. Um... Okay, well, I guess I can't. I guess I'm moving through this character space, and that's how I get to there. Okay. And we're going to move. Do I? No, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Let's, let's redraw. Okay. I can, I think, however, get to three. Double strike, but I don't have anybody next to me. Next melee attack. Yeah, I really wish I could have maybe done that in a way that I could get to use that that double double strike, but not this time. Um, I wanted to get rid of it for the defense. Two, three, or I could fireball, which is steal four damage and inflict burning. How much is your dead eye? It has five. Yeah. Because now you're also burning, and that damage you take from burning will get rid of your dead eye. Cool. Good move. Ow. The, the when the enemy focuses on Jara, then like that's the thing that makes sense. But can I get you over here to do blast? No, I have Sunfire. So you have eight defense. I could use that on you um, all right so let's see what what can i do you have offensive stance you deal extra damage mighty blow melee attack eight and then push two. Oh, okay if i can push them through the enemy then you go over here and then the sunfire would um would do what i need it to do one, two, you're fine, you don't need that block. But let's say that. I'm gonna go here, get rid of that, mighty blow. Nope, you can't be pushed through your own your own people. That's a bummer. Um you're gonna go here. And so I could get rid of this rest of these and then use Sunfire on that thing, knowing that the Glass Lizard is just a summon. But I think I want to use it on this Bandit Archer and then hurt this Archer, because Jara is just out there on her own. I'm going to spend that. And I'm going to move up to engage you. All right. Can you take her all the way out this turn? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Well, almost spoke too soon. Beep. All right. So, protector, headshot. So, if I just get rid of that, I can headshot you and you're done. Bop. Rethink. Let's. Put the cantrip down. Let's advance. Tackle. Move three and then inflict weakened, which is good times. And yeah, I'm just gonna... I want you done. There you go. Jara's Revenge. That glass lizard. It's very nice. Good helper. Thanks for coming by, Trophy Mats. Good to see you.
And thank you. Yeah, I've got two big encounters left uh, if I'm going to try to finish this mission on the stream, which I think I can, maybe. All right, and I got to level up. Let's level Malkin up this time. Intensify, that's about range things. So let's upgrade something. So evocation says all, character, all cards deal plus one damage for the first character hit and plus two for each char additional character hit. Okay, so that's more scaling on that, that bonus. But if I upgrade Cantrip, it'd be only, it only costs one. That makes me way more likely to use it. After defeating the bandits, you quickly look for the closest rat, rattling in a uniform and ask for an audience with the Praetor, who is a is a self-given title given a recognition of a great feat of conquest or statesmanship. Praetor will have authority over the town or settlement where they live, and their domain may extend to nearby settlements if no other rattling leaders challenge the rule. So that's fun. Cool bit of world building again. So I can take supplies or obsidian. I'm going to take obsidian because I have six supplies. Cool, so uh, for the side quest, we get a level up. I'm gonna give that to Rastin. So this has already been leveled Deadeye, which is that um, ability that the enemy was just using. Focus, this is about getting willpower. These are about doing damage. Hitting shot to immobilize, supported. So he does have a summon. Getting plus two to all attack damage and defend two at the start of your turn if you have an active summon, but he does only have one summon. I'm not sure about that. I think... What if I do shelter? Defend four and activate that character. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's upgrade shelter. So after collecting your reward, your, the party is quickly dismissed and ushered back into the street. Not a hero's welcome so much. So I've got this helm. Only uh, Jared can use it, and she has a way better one, so I'm going to sell that. This broken charm. Not about it. Get rid of the bone axe. Now I've got 288. So I could get mithril dust. I don't remember if you need two mithril dust to upgrade a purple item, um, which makes me less excited about getting it. Frost bolt goes into a slot that everybody has full. So flashing blade can go on Rastin in a slot that he doesn't have, and that does some melee stuff. That's interesting. And a torch. Okay, so this is a utility item, so you can get some extra draw, you can get some extra willpower. I think I'm going to get that for Rastin because I am not, uh, I've not gotten a lot of use out of that Biting Time um, item. So let's go into him and let's replace that so that then I can sell this pocketed belt. Only gets me 10 back. It's not too much of a problem. And I think I'm done. Yeah. So I can shelter here. I really do want to do that in some place where I've got, uh, I'm going to get this bonus, especially because this hybrid might come after me. What can I upgrade yet? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade that. I mean, sure. I'm going to rest again because Jar is still really hurt. And then we're going to break camp. I'm going to go over there. I don't remember if I've been here before. Um, this is a shop. I think I have been here before. Short bow. Range attack 2, deal double damage if the target is immobilized or not adjacent to any other character or obstacle. Eh, not, not too impressed. What's here? A battle, possibly some equipment. Let's go a little bit more this way because they are wavering and I want to, going toward the objective will make that, um, will make this go up a bit. But let's do this fight because I can't resist. Among the petrified trees, you see a rattling Fletcher testing out a number of different lodestone arrows on two targets roughly 10 feet apart. What's lodestone? A rare mineral found deep within the earth that is highly prized for its ability to attract metal. Interesting. It could be very effective to uh, manufacture projectiles from. Yeah, I'll pay for that. Um, she's not averse to the idea of doing business, but asks for some of obsidian. Yeah, 65 is fine. Cool. Lodestone quiver. Piercing arrow and phosphor arrow, plus some food and herbs. I'm down. So this is going to go here instead of the speed potion. That run is really nice, but I like both of those. Oh, could you? Yeah, we're going to do this instead of that. It takes away some of your mobility, 
which I'm which is a bummer. And this is a shop. Yeah. I'm gonna keep that though. Let's move. I might change my mind. Um, I need to go finish the mission because I'm wavering on my morale. The girl pleads some more, but when she realizes that you're not going to bite, she regains her composure and moves off into the crowd looking for someone else. She doesn't seem as broken up as when you first met. She can, she's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rest again here for her health. And I can treat this injury now, which would be great. And she's up to nine materials. You approach a tree with a, with circular runish symbols on the front. Unfortunately, you spring an unseen trap, and each of you is catapulted in the air feet first. That's not great. A group of bandits appears out of nowhere and demands a, 70, a payment of 75 obsidian. You can lose all of our obsidian, or you can claim you reach your, you can't reach your money until you're you're released. Now let's let's go for it. Um, you haven't got enough to pay him, but the bandit will settle from all your money and item from your backpack. Okay. Well, I guess that potion's gone now. That's a bummer. I guess that takes away the choice of deciding whether I wanted to, um, keep using that thing that I was, um, keep using the quiver instead of the potion. Materials. Okay, now we're up to determine, which is good. It looks like someone has smoothed the surface recently with their feet to cover something up, and you re you realize from their even spacings that the marks form the four corners of a rectangle. Something has been buried in the barren wilderness. So we could get a weakness, but we could get money. The three of you dig down using your hands and smaller bladed weapons. It's hard work, but eventually you hit something hard. It's a small wooden box, sealed tight. It's loot. Reston levers open one side of the box using his weapon, and his face is lit up by the twinkle of treasure. And we didn't get a weakness. Good times. Okay, now we're tired. I want to rest before I get to this objective, because fighting a boss tired be bad news. Okay, so that's that. What are you? You are materials and food. All right, I'm going to go up there, and I'm going to hope that there's somewhere else around. Yeah, I've got enough for Epic Reward. So I can get... Oh, I get all of this. That's fantastic. Um, shrouded Armor and Waxed Leather Armor, plus a, a bone, ha bone Hammer. Okay, so this is Move and Defend. This is Combo Strikes. So this is like stealthy stuff. Armor 4, Armor 3. I think I'm actually going to give this lower armor to her because it this is more stuff for Rastin, and I don't want to dilute her deck. So I'm going to do this here. Um, but I... I messed up. Should have rested at that first ruins over there. A group of charred hunters are lying in wait for anyone foolish enough to enter the ruin. So these characters are going to be pretty tired. It just means I'm going to get fewer of my cards because I'm going to keep on. I'm going to draw like exhaustion cards more regularly. And these are here's a charred mystic. These are going to do like magic missile types attacks, and then a charred warrior. So I want to try and blitz down to these guys, um, these folks, and tear them up while I can. So if I advance. Headshot is ranged 6 and then 4. I can do that. I can I can do that and take you out, and then y'all are just left, which might be pretty fun. So advance, that puts you into harm's way. I'm going to do that to get rid of it. Um, that is not going to do me. Who do I want just gone? I want you gone. It's a little bit of a waste, but then I can do three damage to you, and it feels very good. So that's one. Yeah, that's one because this is you can't. This is impassable. She might take some damage. 
but I don't think she's going to get blitzed. Says there's that fatigue I mentioned. Ooh, that's that's not happy. Grazed all attacks deal plus one to plus three damage, so it's like random, but it is a uh, can be a pretty big buff. Rethink. We're going to put two cards back on our deck. Let's put swipe. And I mean, curse is not going to hit both of you, so I think I'm going to wait on that because. Or, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, now I can see you. Can I make you burning? No. I don't have anything that makes you burning, so maybe I'll use this power shot instead. Full enemy within two spaces. Okay, so let's move one. You're not within two spaces, so that's a bummer. I want to pull you out of... Um, so let's do that. I kind of messed that up. So let's do this. And then do this. I give some uh, defense. You are defenseless. You can't gain defense. And y'all are backed into a corner. Some fatigue. All right, preparing, advancing. Yep, trying to close in on her. Sniping with some magic stuff. Necromantic spears, picking me apart. So, Skulk, move three and gain one willpower, can move past enemies. So I can get right up in their business. But I also have a battle ready here. Um, so, do I want that? Or do I just want to discard it? Curse is three damage. Yeah, let's go ahead and... Go ahead and do that, just because of how nice that is. So if I do battle ready, then you're going to get some ranged attacks. You're going to get some guards. You're going to get one range attack and one guard, because then you pop him and you guard. You become mighty. You are going to need to move to see some enemies. I'm going to move over here, and I would have to, I can't recycle these to play my Glass Lizard, so I'm just going to have to start shooting. That gets rid of Crazed, which is excellent. I'm just going to take you off the board, and then I'm going to block, and I'm going to keep my Glass Lizard. feel pretty good about this. Famous last words. My dream, Magic Attack 2 and then steal a card. That's not fun. Oh, you stole my fatigue. That's... Good, good for you. Um, I don't feel too bad about that. So she can move here and weaken, which is pretty cool. Sunfire. Mm, yeah, that's not... I mean, that would just take you off the board. I think I'm going to pass on that. That doesn't do me a lot of good. I'm going to move here, and now you're both weakened. And it uses that ability. And I'm going to take you off, and it's going to reuse her ability, which is very good. Uh, yeah, let's draw cards. Okay, no, fatigue made that not cool. Um, and yeah, let's get you over there. So we're going to close in on this last charred mystic. Okay, big damage bonus. Move. Then it gets shockwave. Didn't do a lot to me. The lizard is not going to be able to close to attack. Okay, that's cool. So if you if you make this cheaper, it removes defense. That is pretty cool. Um defense there. Let's drop those. You're going to have to move two to get into range. Look who's moving two. Look who goes smoosh. All right. Good job. I don't think anybody took any help point, uh, hit point damage. Uh, I knew what the enemies were doing. I targeted down. I feel good about that. Got a reward. Um, and this may even be a little bit better for um, 
uh, for Janna than the uh, the other jerkin. Really, I want like rest plate, plate mail kinds of stuff for her because she's a warrior type. But I haven't gotten it yet, so I make do with what I have. Parry. If you were attacked while this card is in hand, prevent all damage from the attack, defend two, and discard this card. Parry can be really handy. I've gotten some great use out of this, especially against like bosses and many bosses. Savage Blow. Melee attack six enemies cannot perform combo strikes in the next turn. So this is a good way for her to be more resilient uh, compared to like when she's getting ganged up on, which is pretty cool. Measured Blow. Melee attack two, defend two. So I could just replace a swipe with that, and it's going to be straight up better. Um, I could tackle, which is inflict weaken two. That's two turns, or the next two attacks, they, they do less damage. That's pretty cool. Shieldmaster has not been giving me a lot of this, because I, I don't think I just have a lot of cards that are giving me defense. So I might switch that out for parry. But now we're exhausted, so we absolutely want to rest. Here's the bummer. That only takes us to tired. So now we're up to fresh, but we have zero food. But I think that will get us to here while still being fresh. Yep. So we're determined and fresh. The ruins ahead feel deathly still, even among those you have found during your journey. As Rastin approaches, he can feel the temperature of the air dropping, adding to the unnatural sense of dread. Amongst the rubble, you spot a strange blue glow, and a monstrous humanoid figure moves into view. The desiccated elven face turns to face you, and its features contort into a silent scream as it approaches. That's fine. I'm sure this is fine. Look, it's a friend. Fury Lich. Lich with an E on the end. I've not run into Lich with an E on the end very often. Have any of y'all seen Lich with an E on the end? It has icy presence. At the start of each turn, inflict chilled on enemies, all enemies with two spaces. Chilled, I think, means that like, you do less damage and you can move less. Maybe it's just move less. No, not great. Not great for me. So, cunning offense. Yeah, I think I want that. So let's move and gain willpower. Let's gain a bunch of block. And let's do that. So all your attacks ignore defense. So I don't have any attacks to use this turn. Cool. I can just get right up in there. Look at that. Discard this. So I gain defense, and then I move there, and boom. Now you're uh, weakened, and you're going to do less damage to me. And I put defense on all my friends. So I'm going to draw cards. Put, choose two cards to put on top of the deck. Um, I'm not going to get that close this turn. I am going to use double effort to put an extra inspirational in my deck. So let's get rid of Fireball. So now, double effort, Inspirational. Inspirational goes in my deck. I get this so I can activate and move here. So if you're going to move away, you want to move that way, which means he can get shots. Um, I'm going to hold on to some... Well, three, 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 me, three attack for nine damage. We'll use cantrip. Let's go ahead and move. I'm gonna move you here. You're fine where you are. All right, what you got? You got chilled. No damage, but chilled. Steal a random power from the target character. Well, that's mean. Deal five damage and inflict shocked. So now she's chilled and shocked. Minus one to movement and all damage dealt. Shocked. Whenever hit by a melee or range attack, deal one status to. Status damage to all friendly targets within two spaces. So that's not great. You're going to do a little bit less damage. Can I make you burning? No. Evocation doesn't really do much for me here, unfortunately. Activate all friendly characters. I'm going to make you move closer. You're going to move there. So... You're going to move here, because you're not within two. Wind up. Yeah, you're going to wind up. You're going to advance. And then you're going to do a mighty blow. Nope. Discard Sunfire. You're going to gain might. 
Now you're going to do a Mighty Blow, which rules. And you don't have defense, so you're going to discard Shield Bash. And then I'm going to discard that and do 5 damage. All right, you're chilled again because you're within two spaces. Oh, Lich is the European spelling. Uh, Warhammer uses Leech for its undead. Good to know. Thank you so much. And very and good to see you. Hi, Dave. All right. Um, so I got some I got some chilling and burning. Chilling and burning. So it's like having a it's like uh, having a, like the flu um, or something. Not not very happy. Um, da, da, da. I don't have a way to make this cost zero willpower. If I get to two, I can go up to four. Offensive stance does me more damage. Named effect, not doing any named effects here. So I think I'm going to get rid of this. One, two, three. You're not quite within three spaces, are you? One, two, three. No. Let's go here because now I can do a magic missile. Defend four. Yes, I want that on you. But I think I'm going to discard that. Get a magic missile. That's pretty good. Four damage for two is not worth it. Now I've got four. Can't really use that last two because I don't have anything to discard, but it felt good. Ow. Alright, so it's got Abjuration. Every time you play a non-power card, you're going to get some defense. That's a very good card. I wish I had that for, uh, for you. But now I can curse you. And so you have... Defenseless two, so for two turns you can't gain defense. I do have my glass lizard, so let's get moving. One, two over here. Don't need that. We're gonna yeah, let's let's have you move. We've got some combo strikes going on here. Um don't need the defense as much as I need you to be in the fight. And you're gonna gain some defense. So now we're like we're crowding up. Everybody's gonna get chilled, which is not great, but I'm closing in on them. I'm taking a bunch of chilled damage. They're just all the way over there now. That was a pretty good turn from the uh the Fury Lich. I, I gotta gotta hand it to her. Uh, yeah, you can only move one. You're going to have to move again to get into range, which is a bummer. Yeah, and you can't move through. But I do have battle ready. You're going to have to move twice to get into range. You have a fireball, though. Fireballs are cool. And I can use flame fan. So... Yep, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's do a fireball. Just good times. And yep, let's do a flame fan. So now you're gonna have more burning. And I got rid of the abjuration, which I feel very good about. And let's move that. Yeah, I'm still gonna be chilled and I want to be able to get up in the Lich's business. Um, and I'm going to hold on to battle ready because maybe it'll be more of more use to me next turn. That's a lot of damage. And there goes my wind up and shockwave. I'm going to push me again. So now again, it will take two moves um, unless I get a, a, a move with uh, greater. Resistance. I could battle ready for range attacks for both of you. And that would be pretty cool. But I can move to here. Yes. Now I'm definitely using battle ready. Um, you don't have any defense. Chop, ba 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 ba, bam bam bam. Don't need that, battle ready. So, simple shot, simple shot. Simple shot, simple shot. On my mark! Rain hell! So we're just gonna uh, Q, Q, 
you um who should get the killing blow uh it's funny to have my fighter pull out a bow so that's a mini boss fight nice all right so i'm gonna get uh i will get a soul gem which is a crafting material i could take another soul gem instead of my legendary item to then be able to upgrade the crown, but I think it's more likely that I'm going to want one of these legendary items because they're very good. So this is just like plain better than that little um, pot horn thing that I have on Malkin, which gives the other summon because it has the same items. It gives a, a special ability that says whenever you summon a character, activate it, and it has a sighted, which is grant inspired to all friendly summons and activate them. So I think. That's a pretty good option. Rin's manual will let me be one of these book spots. Um, deal plus two magic damage if you are within two spaces of your target. So that's good for um, the fire spray and a little bit closer up magic missile. It's got a quality, use, it gives a curse, a flame fan, and life siphon, which is also um, short range because you can see here the, the little red squares are the the attack pattern that it does. But I could get a Seto's tier. Any attack that does six or more damage ignores defense. Uh, I mean, any of them could do that. I could put that on the book slot for Malkin instead. Heightened Senses is really good. For one, all attacks deal plus two damage this turn, and you draw a random damage card from your deck or discard pile plus alertness and rethink. So that's a pretty good option. Do I want to double down on summoning where um, Rastin has the um, uh, Rastin has the lizard? Yeah, Dave, uh, you have your you have a core deck that is your character, your character's deck. So every there's like nine characters and each character has their own different deck. Um, and then you start with each character has like one item that's like an offense kind of item and a really basic armor and so then those cards those items give cards and you have your core deck and then as you advance you can get new items switch out items and they will add or change the cards in your deck you can upgrade the items you can upgrade the cards that are already in your deck you can replace core cards from your deck with uh new cards when you get a level so it's it's a deck builder, but instead of one deck that has cards from all three of your characters, each character has their own deck, and you can specialize and adjust them in different directions. It's been really fun. I got a lot of enjoyment out of this game, and then kind of fell off because I started playing something else. But it seemed like it would be a good stream game, and I'm really liking it here. What do I want? Um, I think I'm going to give Cito's here a chance, because there may be some enemies that um that get like big big defense yeah uh well and imagining the cards the physical cards is really uh is daunting another thing that this game does uh i suppose like hearthstone it really uses the fact that it's digital because oh like i'm gonna upgrade this card and instead of having to switch it out for upgraded version you just say upgrade and then it keeps track of it within your deck um yeah so uh, for Manik, uh, I'm going to use really powerful attacks to try to get past people's defense on like boss type enemies and hope that that pays off for me. We'll see. Maybe I should have taken something else. Um, it'll be a question of can I use it well? Um, so that'll, that'll be on me. So I could take more summons here. I didn't take that summon item, um, but Dire Bat inflicts exposed on all enemies within three spaces. Um, that's really nice. That's pretty compelling. Follow up. Whenever a friendly character performs a ranged attack, gain plus two to melee and magic damage for the rest of the turn. Not super into that for him based on the way that he's built. Signal shot, range attack three, then activate any all other friendly characters. Activate. An activated unit can perform a free move two action. But then I've got this overwatch again. What should I do here? I've upgraded my Lizard, I've upgraded Focus already, um, I've upgraded Shelter, which has been really handy. Um, does anybody have uh, a recommendation on what you think I should do with the level here for Rastin? Should I expand my summon capability and get this exposed? 
should I do signal shot and like try to give some bonuses um, to what I've already got? I've got to vote for signal shot. Uh, see if anybody else has a recommendation. As I take a drink real quick and let folks uh, make their suggestions. Overwatch is handy. I don't remember what it draws from, what kind of deck it draws from. Um, so that's a little bit of uncertainty versus signal shot um, has... I understand all of what it does. Okay, uh, that I've got. That's another vote for single shot. That's good enough for me. Let's have it replace power shot. And there we are. So now more uh, more levels. So uh, I've upgraded both my force missiles. I still have an unstable blast. One I'm pretty okay with. Ice lance, magic attack three, and inflict chilled on all targets in the target area deals double damage if the target is already chilled. So here's the thing. Ice Lance is just Unstable Blast, but better. Unless I'm hitting people who are my, like, I'm hitting my own people. Maybe I wouldn't want to Ice Lance them. Slow Burn. When you ever inflict any named effects on enemy, inflict one extra attack. Yeah, so all this like name stuff, I don't have a whole lot that does it. But I could do an Ice Lance. I still have two swipes. So I think I will actually put the Ice Lance in instead of a swipe. And then Jara. Uh, so this is probably going to be another time I'm going to want input from y'all. Rush. I can draw one movement card from my deck or discard pile. That discard makes it really nice. For this turn, gain plus two movement and all movement cards are free to play. That seems pretty cool. That's especially good for an opener or for repositioning. Savage Blow. Melee Attack 6. Enemies cannot perform combo strikes on their next turn. Pommel Strike, melee attack one, your next melee attack. Played this turn, cost zero willpower. I already have a Pommel Strike. I don't know that two is going to necessarily be good. Or Resilience, defend three at the beginning of your turn. On play, defend three. That seems pretty nice, especially because it only costs one. I think I'm going to do Resilience instead of Adrenaline, but what do y'all think? Alternatively, I could upgrade Parry where it says, basically, you replace parry when you use it, but it doesn't do any extra damage. Tackle would let me do more weakened to an enemy. Swipe just goes up, takes the damage up. Adrenaline becomes cheaper. Pommel Strike does more damage. So what do you think? Should I do Resilience instead of Adrenaline? Resilience instead of something else? Double down on Pommel Strike? Put some Savage Blows in here, maybe instead of a Swipe? Who did I end up putting? Viva boss battle capabilities, yeah. Let's go ahead and put a Savage Blow instead of one of the swipes. That definitely up upgrades my damage capacity. Um, plus I've got the Cito's Tear, um, which I could give to Jara, but then it would replace that other thing that she has. Uh, but I have the Tear now. I've got all this loot. Okay, some more text. It appears Naya has been here, Malkin points out. Um, again, we've got this comma here. That's not, I don't think that flows very nicely. It appears that Naya has been here, period. Malkin points out some writing carved into a stone slab by the point of a weapon. The writing is a message to any voiders following and describes where Naya has gone next. Leaving a trail like this is a dangerous gamble, but as you have little else to go on, the party decides to follow the clues to your next destination. So, um, yeah, there's like, there's been like this structure, this construction showed up in the last, uh, the last, um, like story progression area. I think it's something that we used the same text. Like, I'm not a great editor, but okay, come on. Um, hey, Lothar. Uh, yeah, the, there is there, the little editor, bra uh, voice in my brain never goes entirely away. Sometimes I can, uh, sneak by it by writing really quickly. Um, but it doesn't totally go away. So, continue to follow Naya's clues to find out where she has gone. Ooh, good helmet. But I already have that, uh, I already have the gold helm. So, this is, like, still pretty cool, but I don't think it's gonna do what I want it to. So, I can, this crossbow, however, can go to rest, and uh, that, that'll be great. I'll probably end up selling this helm. So we're tired. Let's rest. I can upgrade. So what if I upgrade you? So all of these items get upgraded. That's pretty rad. 
or all of these items get upgraded. That already becoming three, that seems that's really tempting because often it's like, okay, can I get up to four willpower to then get this blitz ability where everybody gets, you know, physical like melee attack, range attack, or some defense. Uh, I, that would make me feel like I'm going to use battle ready way more often. Uh, aggression does extra damage, defend two, or see those tiers, which I haven't even assigned yet, but I draw more cards, and then I would shuffle one back in. So this is like card draw, this is some extra damage. I'm leaning toward this. I know that I've already been using it. I feel like I'm getting some good utility out of them. Um, and I just got this one. I'm not even sure exactly where I'm going to put it. So I'm leaning toward Duntag's crown getting upgraded. I think I'm able to go ahead and do that. So I can only do the one upgrade. Uh, everybody is back up to full. We're nice and determined and fresh now. I only have one food left, so we better get on the road. Wait, I have the tiers. I need to put this somewhere. So Cito's tier. I've given you some more attack damages. Um, this is another thing that gives me a ton of damage, though. So I think I'm going to end up putting Cito's tier somewhere else. So what do you have? Sunfire does nine damage. I don't know. Okay, here's the thing. Cito's tier. Any attack that deals six or more damage ignores defense. That's a global ability, if I'm reading it correctly. So I can put that on um, her, and Jara's big attacks will still get that bonus. So that... Yeah, that's absolutely worth it. Um, I spent the, the resources to upgrade the Black Tome, but I think I think this is going to do the trick. And I have this other armor. Do I want to replace so this offensive stance and elite versus sprint and grit? Yeah, I'm going to switch over. This is this is more of a warrior's armor, which is what I want right now. Okay, cool. I've got some enemies in the way. I'm going to need some food. I'm pretty fresh. I'm going to see if I can go around these guys. All right, I think I got through. Um, I have not found a limit of the number of cards you can have in your deck, Dave. I think it that limit practically is the number of upgrades you can get. I don't know, because you if you upgrade, you replace cards. So it's... If every car, if every item in your deck, you know, every item on your character had three cards that it gave you, then that would be the most you could get from that. And then you could get cards from good and bad traits. That's kind of a fluid situation. So I would guess that you're like the deck could probably get five or so more cards than this. You're probably getting up into the 20s or so, uh, but I have not, like, I haven't sat down and really done analytical breakdown of what that, of what all that really means. It does point toward, like, an, a general deck building's um, idiom, or like a maxim, where in something like Slay the Spire, a lot of people say, I want a small deck where every card does really good, does, uh, does really well, or at least where I have consistency, where every turn I'm more likely to be drawing a same combo of cards where I know what I'm going to get turn on turn. This game, I've gone way more maximalist because you're getting cards from all these different items, and the more powerful uh, items tend to give you two or three cards each. Um, and so instead, of what I'm looking for is a good mix of abilities and some synergies. Yeah, well-defined combos, like Lord Lothar said, exactly. I know I'm I I don't go that hardcore on these games um, usually. I I've gotten more attentive to all the combinations in something like Darkest Dungeon when I picked it back up. But yeah, combo play does a lot here. And you know, I'm playing this for fun. Like if there were competitive trials of fire, maybe I would like get more hardcore about it, but you know, this is supposed to be fun. A small arched stone bridge with various stones missing uh, crosses a long since dried up river. You notice that the keystone of the bridge's arch is made of a black volcanic stone. So I could examine the volcanic keystone to see if you can gather some usable materials. I might get an epic reward. Um, 
but there's 50% chance of that. I'll, like, I'll probably get the reward. Or scour the riverbed. The presence of so many tracks could mean a nearby source of food or water. So I could really use some food. But epic reward sounds pretty good. The keystone is far too large to bring with you, but up close, the runes carved on the surface are inlaid with intricate mithril designs. So I get mithril dust, um, which is an upgrade, which upgrade material, so I can upgrade one of these purples. So that's pretty good. It has been a long time since I've had a Big Mac. I could not even say. Um, let's... I'm going to go over here and hope that I can buy some food, and then I will feel better about resting. Well, I can't spare two food right now, my, fi my friend. I can spare 90 gold. Yeah, I think I think you're right, Lothar. Um, Slay the Spire, you're not adding anywhere near as many cards, and your, your starting deck is a little bit bigger. So I like that this has different, like the meta in Trials of Fire is different in terms of like what what is the common wisdom of a deck builder? Because a deck builder game shouldn't always ever follow the same set of rules because then those rules are, like new games are taking those rules as given and they are um, assuming that you should keep the same structure. Instead, a game could go, okay, a deck builder can be a lot of things. I'm gonna choose to set the game up in a way that maybe you do want a lot of different cards. So I'm going to hire him for 90 Obsidian. Thanks for swinging by, Dave. Uh, very good to see you as well. Take care. The Arcanist quickly sets off to give his fee to another male rattling before exchanging an emotional goodbye. Okay, so now I have Neural, an Arcanist. Upgrade common and rare staves, tomes, and totems at reduced cost. So that's really going to be for Malkin. And now let's shelter. Okay, cool. I can, yeah, just deal with different various situations. Um, upgrade item. So I can upgrade a bunch of different things now. I probably don't want to upgrade this helm because I'm not really using it right now. Redan Longsword. So if I upgrade it, melee attack three, the melee attack three, so the the damage on those goes up. Adjacent enemy loses six defense. The draw card, melee attack six. That's already that doubles the damage, but then the dam the bonuses count double. That's pretty good. Mighty blow, melee attack eleven. Melee attack two deals damage equal to your current defense. I think this becomes free, and then wind up first melee attack you perform each turn does four damage. That's pretty rad too. Block uh, the uh, sorry the fortress shield. Block becomes six. Shield wall goes up in resilience, so it lasts longer. Impenetrable wall. Uh, instead, I draw two cards. It's pretty good, but um, I have put. I think I've put a lot into Jara, so maybe I should upgrade this Sunstaff, which is the first purple that I got. Does more damage with Flame Fan. Deals six damage. Okay, here's the thing. Six damage with Fireball. Prox Cito's Tears where the enemy, um, where it will bust through the enemy's defense. And this goes up to melee attack 13, and if it defeats the target, deal may 8 to adjacent targets, which then also breaks defense. So I think I'm going to go this way. So the Sun Staff now is going to um, synergize with Cito's Tears much more frequently. Okay, maybe I'll get some food here. Everybody's pretty fresh over there. See if this, nope, that one's not going to come and get me. You enter a settlement and immediately hear a commotion ahead. You quicken your pace and spot several ratlings with weapons drawn, forcing a column of human people to turn over their possessions. Uh, I feel like probably I don't want them to get uh, just robbed. I don't know what these people did, but let's hope that I'm not just uh, jumping into battle to defend people who are jerks. So I can throw down my Glass Lizard if I get to three. Tackle, one, two, three. I need one extra move. But if I move to there with Tackle, I will do Weakened, which seems like it could be pretty rad. But if I can get to Fireball, that's one, two, three of them that all get hit by Fireball, which seems like it'd be pretty fun. 
Let's do rethink. Um, let's get rid of Ice Lance. Do double effort to get an extra Fireball on my deck. I think I'm just going to drop everything here. I'm going to drop this to move one. I'm going to tackle to main uh, weekend here. And I still have three, so I can go pop, do a bunch of damage, make them all burning. I feel great about that. Um, if I go ahead and use this, this will give defense to my friends. Um, boom, boom, which is pretty good. I don't need to sprint here, so I'll put Cantrip down on Malkin. Okay. She's probably going to take a good amount of damage. They've got some enemies. Can't get three on me without a lot of movement. Um, they, these are also going to take burning, and they're weakened, so they're going to do less damage, and they can't do combo. So she's in a pretty good place. That that tackle goes a long way in being able to um, just charge into battle and not be as much trouble. We'll see. So weakened, burned off attack, no damage. They move, they move, attack. You're weakened, two, combo strike, one, some defense, a lot of defense. Okay, getting up in Malkin's business. But now they burned. This one's, uh, this one will die at the end of its next turn. But in the meantime, it can do um, combo, which I don't necessarily want it to. So headshot. Um, headshot would kill this enemy. Feel pretty good about that. One. Um, yeah, this will be fun. So we run over here. We've completely left these guys in the dust. And then can I move away and then headshot? I can. And then you're out. Flame fan. We're going to save that. And we're going to use that. Can move you to go here. We're going to save that. And we're going to Put that on there. These guys are probably going to try to scramble over here. They might try to rush Malkin, but let's see. Okay, rushing over to the middle. Got some defense on there. So this one's... Oh, okay. I thought this one was going to try to tie, tie Jar up. Headed over to Rastin. Beating him up on him some, but now they've... Uh, oh, I thought that was going to kill him. Anyway, I miss, I miss it. Read it. Signal shot. So I can go here. I can discard that. Signal shot. Kill that one, but then activate everybody else. So, no, actually, I'm going to move you over here. Bam. Bam. And then do a nice big damage. There we are. Good battle. All right, so we got another pot, broken vessel, which is just a worse version than what Malkin already has, but some gold. And let's see, let's give you a level. Alpha Strike, Combo Flare, Lift Exposed, Shelter. I mean, that shelter has been really handy. Da, da, da. But I can't upgrade Signal Shot. Yeah, that's nice. Take it up to dam five damage. With the pile of belongings seized from the humans and possessions of the dead ratlings, there's quite a collection of loot. Take all the loot. I'm going to give some of the loot back to the humans. Hope to get some food. While there were some useful items that you could have foregone, the townspeople thank you enthusiastically. There's even talk of renaming the town in your honor. Did not get food. High chance of battle, high chance of food. All right. Um, you notice some oddly shaped markings in the ground and walls, like shadows scorched into the dried earth and stone. Slowly, one of the shadows near Malkin begins to move, and she looks around to see more of the shadows coalescing into humanoid form. I'm sure that's fine. Just humanoid shadows. Um, I've 
I've fought shadow creatures. They're really annoying. I'm just going to try and skirt by and get some food. The shadows seem stunned at first, but soon start moving around the structures in the open space in front as if going about their daily business. You notice two of the figures go down into a cellar entrance that you probably wouldn't have noticed amongst the rubble. Heck yeah, look at all this food. Food, some, th some herbs, a chain spear. Okay, some, it's like the, what the slavers were using. And a tailored robe, which is definitely just straight up better from Malkin. I will take all of that. You're gonna switch out your robe here. You are the one who would use this but I kind of like what you already have. So let's just chill there. We're good on that. Let's go to this town. And then I think I'm gonna head right to the boss. You are approached by a shrewd rattling and oversized finery. He sizes up your group and claims to be looking for a group to help her retrieve an investment from some uncooperative humans. So I could try to help, which would be a hard battle, obsidian and shopping. We're almost at four. I decided, I said I was going to wrap up by four. I think I'm going to go try to do the last battle. Um, so I'm just going to sell a bunch of stuff, buy an upgrade material, some food. What is this? Shiv? No, I need that. So let's go toward the end battle. Ooh, that's an enemy. Um, am I going to get to rest before I get there? I don't know how far away it is. Okay, so it's in the mountains. Where do I go in? Oh, I go in over here. Um, that is forest. I'm going to go here. Okay, so this is a, like an interior, um, interior space. I didn't notice that these were here until probably my third or fourth time playing the game. So I just need enough stamina to, to not be tired when I go into the fight. That's basically what we're looking at. Okay, let's upgrade that. Um, I can keep on meditating. There's no reason to leave things on, on the table. Let's upgrade that. I have one more. So let's... Meditate and upgrade something for you. Upgrade your improvised shot. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of stamina. Let's go fight the boss. Judging from Naya's writings, the ruins ahead must be your next, next destination. Unfortunately, the area has, seems to have been settled by a large group of charred. Their leader, a sun priest, approaches, demanding you leave and do not disturb the sacred place. You plead with them to let you search the ruins, but the large charred leader refuses to let you pass. You have no choice but to challenge them to be allowed passage into the ruin. Fight. Okay, so we got a sun priest. Sun's glory. Every three turns deals seven magic damage to the nearest hero. Yikes, that's a lot. Death guard. At the start of the turn, defend two on the closest Sun Priest within two spaces. So, I probably want to rush down these Death Guard before I hit the Sun Priest because they're going to keep on giving him defense and making him hard to crack. Um, if I do a Fireball, it will just go straight through, um, straight through the defense, so. But if I can fireball on these and then their defense too. Aimed effect. It will inflict burning. Okay. I'm going to discard this. We're going to start moving in on them. You're not going to defend. Range 7. You don't have range yet, so I'm going to move you. Okay. I do have enough here. So let's do fireball, blop. So you'll see that they took six because Cito's tears um, uh, means that I can attack through the defense, which is pretty cool. Now they're both burning. I'm gonna target you, who's burning, 
and I'm going to get Call the Flames. I gain Burning, and then do Magic Attack 3. Mighty Blow. I'm going to drop that to get some defense, and then I'm going to do 7 damage again. Uh, hmm. Oh, maybe it's only one time per turn you get the like Cito's Tears damage. I'm going to move up here. I'm going to discard Call the Flames to get some defense. Okay, move, reel in. You're going to pull in my range guy, sure. Protector, put some damage on him. Okay, a lot of defense, a lot of defense. Okay, a lot of buffs between these two characters. Cool. That fire didn't use some good... Uh... So here's the thing. I can shelter... I can go over to Malkin and shelter uh, him. But I can also skulk if I wanted to. So I think I want I think I'm going to to shelter her. Get some defense on him. Discard that. Sprint. Inspirational. So I'm gonna move here. I'm gonna move you there. Magic attack 13. If this defeats the target, deal 8 magic damage to all adjacent characters. Can I make... Can I get to the point where this will... That will kill somebody to do the damage? I might have to take damage on here because you don't have ranged attacks. You can have her shoot him from there. I could sprint, savage blow, and then move back. And that would do it. Um... Is that going to work? Sprint costs two, and then you do two. I don't know that that's enough, but I can move and gain willpower. So that's four. Sprint, draw a card. Okay, here's the thing. I can spend two. There, I get rid of your protector. And then I spend this to move away. I discard this, and now I've got Enough to Sunfire there. You're dead. You take eight. Beautiful. So now there's only one of these that are going to give defense to the Sun Priest. And you're defended. You still have a, a pretty good amount of armor, and you're very defended. And there's only two enemies now. Okay, prepare, inflict burning on any character. You stole a card from me with like the mind trick thing. Okay. Crit. Gain protected and then defend too. I like it. Elite class talent. Yeah, that it's just extra extra magic. Heightened senses, bonus damage. Yeah, let's discard that. Discard. Unblockable five. Yeah, let's do it. Gets rid of your prepare. It's also nice for me. And I'm going to Discard my Pommel Strikes so that you can focus. You're going to hold on to your Glass Lizard again. I'm guessing this means that next turn you're going to do damage. Okay. We'll see. That sucks for me. Okay. Protector on that one. Some damage. I'm going to reel him in. Burning on her. Okay. Yeah, keeping her out of the fight. But here's the thing. I can get a little bit back into the fight, and I can do all that. And you have faint, which means I can make you lose defense. Um, but first, I need you to move. So you're going to move here, and you're going to move here, and now they're both weakened. And you're going to lose 
So then your defense. Do I want so you're backed into a corner? Adrenaline. I don't think I want adrenaline here. So I'm gonna play rally and get me some more willpower. Glass lizard. So now I've got another buddy right there. Melee attack four and inflict defenseless. So you're within a you're in a bad way. And I'm gonna discard that to get some defense. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on, on them. This priest is uh, this death guard is close to dead. I've got two more turns before um, the sun priest does the zap again. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. The uh, lizard is doing some good work here with its melee and ranged resistance. You're in ranged attack range. Uh, you can shoot people now, um, which means if I move, I can then shoot, and you're done so. Okay, so you can move all the way down to here and get a bunch of defense. You're going to have wind up. I'm going to draw cards for free. Uh, I'm going to draw strength, which puts some defense on you. And then I'm going to discard these, and I'm going to critical strike, where I get a bunch of bonus damage, because windup says the first melee attack you perform each turn deals plus three damage. All, all damage bonuses count quadruple. Bam. Very big hit. Love it. You get your own attack, and I get a combo strike. You're going to gain a bunch of defense. And you're going to gain a little bit of defense. Lost some defense to that flaming. Burning on any character. They're moving. They're burning more. They're trying to get, looks like they're trying to get Malkin out of the fight. So I'm going to move here, because I can still magic missile from there. You're going to advance. You're going to advance over here. Now draw a card. Chop. Um, five and five. Named effect stack. Burning. Okay. You're going to do your damage again. I won't, probably want you to do the damage here because both of those are hurt. This is at the Beginning of the turn, I hope. Okay, so this is nearest hero, not character. So if I put the mad soul down, it's not going to get got. Phosphor arrow is that. Yeah, I'm, you're you're all ranged right now. Okay. Yeah, let's. And then double strike. Bam, bam. And defense for my friends. Enemies down to 24. Psst. Big damage to Jara. Gets rid of wind up. Gonna make her burn. Four. Pushes her back a little bit. Where is the I guess yeah, that has a that does have a range. So you're way out of out of position, unfortunately. So you're just going to move back in. You don't have vision here. So, oh, you do. Oh, that's, I thought that was all, all blocked. So that's pretty rad. Just put some damage on. Uh, get some willpower back because of focus. Rethink. Let's go there. So you could shoot twice. You have to move. This is all heroes, right? Each hero. Okay. One, two. Nice. Battle ready. So, two shots for you. Two guards for you. Two shots for you. So, you discard that. Go into range. 
I thought you were next. Oh, well, that's a bummer. Yeah, you don't have ranged attacks. So. But you were getting targeted. So not so great for me. You're going to move to here to be out of um, out of range for whatever. Make him move to do more damage to me. Okay, you can move up to there. Signal shot. Move over here. Let's get some willpower. You have a move card. Deal three damage to all. Yes, yes, yes. I want that. I want all of this. Evocation. So, aggression for you. Then, rush. And you do the damage. And you get the bonuses. And then I discard this. And do that. You get to move. You're good where you are. You're going to move into range. It's not quite your time to do the thing again. So I think I'm doing okay. You're moving. You're burning. You're moving. You're moving. Okay, you're going to get to do your big thing next time. So again, you're not that fast. Okay, so shelter. I can move to you. Boom, there you are. Go here. Now I have a headshot. Advance. Advance. Headshot. Doesn't didn't quite kill, get the kill. Should have done that in a different order. One, two. Just gotta try to pin you in. It's, you're gonna. Uh, oh wait! If I undo that, then it's at nine health, seven magic damage, seven damage. Okay, so you're gonna take the damage. You're gonna live. You have a bit more of a way out, but I'm not gonna lose a character um, unless you have some more packs, which maybe you do. No, that was not a. That was not the turn you needed. You needed better, friend. What's the best? Uh, let's be inspirational. Let's draw a bunch of cards. Let's be a shield wall. Let's advance and then sprint. Got it. Victory. After the battle. You explore to find Naya's lifeless body lying unceremoniously amongst the rubble. After taking some time, you search her belongings and discover that she has tracked down a, a powerful elven wardstone to this location. You go about trying to complete her doomed quest and uncover the wardstone amongst some other useful artifacts. With your discoveries safely packed away, you begin the long trek back to Terralin, bringing with you both hope and terrible news. Your many wounds don't seem to have slowed you down, and you set a fierce pace for the journey home. The group is met at the gates by a group of grateful voiders who quickly go about putting the wardstone to use. News of Naya's passing hits the settlement hard, and you can only hope that her sacrifice has been worth it. Only time will tell if the powers of the wardstone will be unlocked. Continue. So that's the trial of fire. This is the uh, the basic uh, the basic objective. Galdrim, hello! I don't know what what person that name goes to, but hello, welcome. Gus, thanks for dropping by. Good to see you. Uh, you arrived just as I finished, unless you've been watching um, for a while. Uh, but yeah, so this is Trials of Fire. Uh, I really like the game. You get some stats here at the end. Um, you know what you've been doing. This is like just leaderboards. Soul level, I think, is like unlocking cards and things like that. Um, just got in from a bike ride. Uh, yeah, no worries. Hope, you're ha hope you had a good bike ride. So that's just a little over th three hours. That is a whole run of Trials of Fire, which is what I was looking for. And I think we're going to wrap up. Um, again, 
Uh, my name is Michael Underwood. I write as Michael R. Underwood. This is twitch.tv slash TurboTango. Uh, this is going to go up on YouTube as soon as I can make the exporting talk to each other the way that they're supposed to. Um, right now, I'm looking to try to stream every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern as a starting point. Um, I'm going to try to keep the schedule uh, section on this channel updated so that you all know what's going to happen. If you liked what you saw, please go ahead and hit that follow button and you can decide whether you want to get notifications for when I go live. Like if you set notifications, then it can either send you an email or it can send a push notification to a phone and you can control that. Um, but if you're following, then uh, it makes it easier to find the stream when it's on. And we would, I would love to, to see you all again uh, next time. If you liked uh, Trials of Fire, um, please let me know. If there's other stuff you'd like to see me play, uh, please let me know. And you can do that here on chat or reach out to me on Twitter at Mike R. Underwood um, or, you know, comment on the YouTube. Um, two, two more things. One, um, I have a Patreon, which supports my writing because my main job is as a author of science fiction and fantasy fiction. Um, you can find that at patreon.com slash Michael R. Underwood. That's R for the letter R. Um, and two is I am streaming again later today. Uh, I'm not going to be the primary streamer, but I'm going to be a player on The Case of the Cindered Seal, which is a Blades in the Dark actual play um, campaign uh, GM'd by Brandon O'Brien, who um, is one of the people I co-host Speculate with. So Case of the Cindered Seal is a Speculate actual play series. We're about 17 or 18 episodes in. I hear that we're going to do a like Halloween-y spooky season episode tonight, um, which should be really fun. And that's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern over at twitch.tv slash Arvin Elrond. And I'm going to type that in here. And then you can find me on Twitter at... So those are some links for you. And my Patreon is there. Uh, this is only my first like full stream from PC. So I still have some work to do in setting up my bots. Um, and there's that. So yeah, thank you so much everybody who came by. Um, thank you to, uh, to Dave and Triffid um, who came by and left earlier. Thank you to uh, Minik0002. Thank you to Lo Lo Lord Lothar. Um, thank you to Godrin. And thank you to everybody else who um, uh, was watching and um, you know lurking. Maybe you've got something else going on in the background. Uh, it's great to have you here. It makes me feel like I'm not just streaming to myself. Um, so I should probably get, pra get practice streaming to myself because it will make me better at doing this thing for when y'all are here. And now I'm going to go back to my OBS and I'm going to go to my end card um, before we wrap the stream. Thank you all so much for being here for my stream relaunch. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to have people here and people chatting and uh, adding their thoughts on what I should do for this game. Um, it's been really fun, and I look forward to doing it again. See y'all later.